Hey fuckers! What up? It is the special edition of the Tats Channel podcast. It is a Halloween episode for your Halloweening pleasure. And as usual, I'm Kenshin, and I am joined by my fucking retarded crewmates, uh, <laughs> Tinker, NDL, and my beloved boyfriend, Tats. Yeah, that, that's not... Uh... <laughs> no, I actually have a girlfriend, but she doesn't know that Tats is my boyfriend. Shh, he's actually my brother. Alright, well, I'm anyways. In love with, I'm in love with Tats. You're cheating on me, Tats? Everyone's in love with whoa, Tats. Whoa, whoa, I laid claim <laughs> to that. I, I laid claim to that meat years, well, that rice years ago. <laughs> that, right. that, that rice is mine. Oh, wait, I All got right. a bit of advice for you guys. You will stop procrastinating, guys. Later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm ready to begin right, this so, shindig. Who says that word right, anymore? So, so happy Halloween and uh, and um. Anyway, um, yep. happy Halloween. This is our um Halloween special podcast, that. and you're gonna deal I already said with it. That. Okay, I said it already, and you said it too, but I, I said it better. It Anyways, um, all right. So yeah, uh, so now I, I can see Tats is glaring at me across the room here. Uh, so I'll, I'll turn it over to him to uh, steer this podcast away from the maelstrom of penis shit jokes that we're about to make. So Tats, Wait, you said you weren't going to do any way. Well, so um, I'm giving it over to you so that we won't end up having a French Revolution. Okay, so see Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> what we should talk about, I think, on this one is anything scary related. Um, so My it could be. Dick. Um, not that. Anything scary like this, such Have as like a scary video or Massive. a scary video game, um, or some of the future scary videos that we're going to be doing. Um, but it turns out we did have some good reception on the gaming creepypastas we just made. Um, some people found that a little bit disappointing because it was a repeat of the Creepy Urban Game Legends. And as I say now, um, the Creepy Urban Game Legends was a mixture of the scary Easter eggs and the creepypastas, and it was in parts, which is not what we wanted. So that's why we made a new one. Um, so that's done. Um, so what I now turn to NDL, and I say, NDL, what is your scariest video game you've ever played? Well, see, for me, the uh, scariest video game No, I've I said ever NDL, not Kenshin. I know you said NDL, <laughs> but I don't care. We don't want uh, people to get confused again, Kenshin. You do not have the talking conscience of... Talk, get, mm. Just talk, NDL. This is beautiful. This is so beautiful. <laughs> um, right, you know what? He does the dictation. NDL, my sweet, sweet, low bald gentleman, <laughs> what is, in your opinion, the scariest game that you have ever played? I, I gotta say, the creepiest game I've ever played, it's incredibly cliche, but Pokemon Red and Blue Lavender Town, whenever I got to that, I was scared out of my mind. I mean, I didn't play video games a lot when I was a kid, but when I was in the Pokemon phase, um, Pokemon Lavender, the Lavender Town always scared the shit out of me, but... Pussy. I mean... What are, you, what are you afraid of, flowers or something? Um, I don't know. It's just, uh, when I was a kid, I was kind of terrified of death and still am, and when you get to, you know, the Pokemon thing... What? They're a good it's band. It's a Lavender Town. <laughs> They're a great band. Don't hate. I just... I didn't know Pokemon could die. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everything <laughs> dies, NDL, like my father. <laughs> oh god. I don't know. What are you guys' what are your guys' scariest games? I mean Let's let's uh, let's 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 talk to uh, the Teletubby in the room. <laughs> Which is who? <laughs> Take Tinker. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, you're you're the uh I'll think of something to call you later. Tinker. Oh, his Bitch of a mother probably just got home. So uh, let, let, let's turn to uh, Simon Cowell over here. <laughs> Simon Cowell? <laughs> yeah. No. Um, my scariest game I've ever played? Um, I still have Amnesia, but I have got done like the demo level, and I still haven't really got into the meat of the game. Um, but that's a tough one. I've played quite a number of scary games. I think it's probably... That's going to sound stupid. But yeah, Silent... I know. I know. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, no, I was going to say Silent Hill 4. It is an old game. Um, but I do remember owning it, and when I actually came across the victim ghost for the first time, um, I realized that you can't kill these enemies. There's no way you can kill them, yet they can hurt you, and they can follow you throughout the whole level. And the music and the sound it makes, it really made me didn't want to play the game. It took me quite some courage to actually play through it and beat it. So, 
for me, I, I actually found that game a lot scary. Um, and I, I second that with Condemned, but now because I play Condemned so much, it's just a joke. Um, so, yeah, and Fear, put Fear on there as well, because the first time was quite a scary game. So. All right, well, uh, as for me, uh, my personal scariest game, anyone who watched our scary game lists uh, is probably going to know what's coming when I say this, but um, I would say it's a lovely little Korean title called White Day, a labyrinth called School. Uh, that's the um, shitty subtitle to it that makes it sound like it's a psychological drama about teenage angst but no it's uh it's it's a horror game done in a way that only asians can because you know korea and japan are really like good at making horror related stuff and korea is really good at like the revenge horror and like paranormal stuff so uh give them credit there just white day it's um the, the legend behind it, which, well, it's actually true, it's that when the game was first released, it was, like, people got too freaked out by it, so, like, the developers had to um, patch out, like, the scary aspects of what scared the shit out of people so bad, and, like, they didn't patch them out, but they moved it to a higher difficulty, so, and it was a difficulty that would unlock once you'd completed the game, so, like, if you were able to get through what the game normally had to offer, then you could really challenge yourself and, uh, you know, go for the full-on scares, because, um, part of what it did, like, it would seriously, seriously darken the game, and some of the ghosts and illusions and paranormal shit it's just it's hard enough to deal with it with somewhat darkness but the game would almost be in pitch black darkness and you do have a, a lighter uh that never runs out so that's nice but i mean that doesn't help you much thing is the game doesn't like rely on anything complex like fear does with the flashbacks and shit mm. like that it's so literally just what, what system was this what system was this for again um i'm not sure about others but i do know for sure it was on the pc uh, and um right. yeah but i mean it's an older game so you could run it but uh because there's a project working uh that they're working to like restore the game and stuff to like be fully english compatible but the thing is it's the soundtrack minimal though it is is incredibly creepy the story is strange and the 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 scares in it are incredibly psychological it's not like boo like dead space that's why i fucking hate dead space yeah the aesthetic is cool and yeah it's nice and gory but like the monsters are so fucking thrilled to be working with you that they like they they fight for the spotlight in white day like it's like that that kind of fear that amnesia tries to instill but i think white day does it better of that 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 creep that just starts at the bottom of your spine and tingles its way up and you know it's there but you you, you don't you don't know what it is but it sounds creepy you're just so fucking scared uh, it's a great game. Check it out. And thing is, no games or movies scare me anymore. But that game, literally several times, I jumped and actually had to turn the game off and uh, reapproach it at a later date. Yeah, and you needed what did you say, a Korean PC or some sort? Because uh, uh, you did mention it in the horror games, didn't we? Yeah, the the the, the com project that's going on for it's uh, unnamed GS. I think I think they've kind of abandoned it because they ran into copyright, but they did link to other like no they, they they're still working on it but it's hosted on different servers i believe uh what it does basically it installs a program with it that when you run it, it allows it to simulate a korean pc when you run it within the shell so it's uh you don't have to go through all the pain in the ass of simulating a korean pc uh, i believe the current version will just do that for you which is convenient because i don't much feel like booting up my computer and instead of windows going dun, 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 but i don't have xp so I, so so instead of having a I don't want to have it. <laughs> 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 That's not racist, is it? Oh, um, no. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you've never uh, that's pulled why. yourself to finish the game yet, have you? You still haven't beaten it. Um, that's why I'm a Mac elitist. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I, I haven't. It's not because oh, I'm too scared to do it. Part of it is because I just I never got around to it because I'm a lazy fuck, and so I, I would, and I think the other half of it I may have gotten stuck because it's also partly a puzzle game with some actually well designed crafty puzzles that'll actually make you think that are randomized. And this is an old game. I think it's like 04 or something like that. 
maybe 05. I think it's 05. And the puzzles are randomized. So, like, it's the same puzzle, but it'll have different variables to it. So it's not like, okay, I can look up this walkthrough and know this is the case. And it, it doesn't hold your hand. It's like, okay, here you go. Yeah, so it just throws you in there, doesn't it? Like that. Yeah, effectively. It doesn't tell you anything. And in, in the same style that Dark Souls and Demon Souls does that, it lets you figure it out for yourself. And, you know, again, like... The Souls games, you gotta like obviously figure out how to play for yourself. But even if you look up how to play a game, like you know how to do the puzzles, like White Day, they can't tell you specifics. They can just say take note of these things because all the numbers and stuff are variableized. It's really neat. Nice. But the the scares are just ah, oh, it's uh, it, it gets you, and it, it's nothing like oh, it's in your face. It's like a it's that 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 thing that goes bump in the night that you that you really want to see what it is, but you're too scared to get out of bed, but you're afraid that it might kill you. But you think maybe if you go up and look at it, you might find out what it is. It may not be scared, but it also could kill you quicker. Yeah, so it's like it's not the American of um. Oh no. When they turn the corner and it's there, it's more fact that it's the tension building. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Like um. I'm sorry one, about that. Like one thing that really got me. That I mean, it's not a spoiler saying it at all. There's there's one um, part in the game where it's early on, it's like the first ghost, um, and it comes to a point where the soundtrack just re- comes this like creepy wailing chanting sound, and you're just like, what the fuck? And then you uh, you you hear this uh, this scratching sound like nails on a chalkboard, which actually is literally what it is, because you pick up notes around the school about. Uh, possibly the origin of the ghosts and one of them has to do with a girl being up near a chalkboard and getting like so ostracized and stuff that she ends up killing herself something like that so i think that's the ghost related to that but you hear it but you're Jeez. but when you're hearing it you don't know you're thinking okay this is probably a ghost you're expecting that but you're thinking you at first you hear it and you're like did i just hear that and then obviously it's certain you do but you're expecting okay this is some scripted encounter or something of the sort, and when you finally do encounter the ghost, even though, even if you're someone like me and you know it's coming, it'll never prepare you for it because you you know it's coming when you hear that sound, but the way it's done is uh, it'll get you so, every time. It's like if you play that creepy maze game, and the <laughs> yeah. exorcist pops pops up. Oh yeah. God! No, no I. No, that's, that's, not, yeah, no, that's, that's scary. Creepy. That that's a single gimmick. This yeah, is, I suppose so. One, but you know, when you when you do it first time around, but yeah, yeah, but this is something like you know, it it's like I would say it's even scarier than the Gatherers because it's like from Amnesia, clarifying there, um, if people didn't know, because while the Gatherers certainly are creepy and stuff, like okay, they and they chase you, you hide, they go away. Like Gatherers leave the map eventually. This thing pursues you through the map. And you can't hide from it. You just have to stay ahead of it. And it's not a chase or anything like that. It's an entity that exists within the level. And it can find you no matter where you are. And it's just, it's creepy as hell. And uh, anyone who, it, it, it will hunt you relentlessly. And when you see it, it's just like, my blood goes cold every time I see the actual ghost and encounter it. And how it functions. It's just, uh, it, it gives me goosebumps. So, and that's just one of the many things you'll encounter. I have not played very far through the game. And, um, but no, it's not your American horror of, hey, fucker, what's up? It's actually like, it, it gets to you on a subconscious level. It's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like the concept that Silent Hill tries to instill with the uh, psychological horror done in a different, much more simplistic way that ultimately works out. It's, it's, it's really neat. It's like, the best way to describe it, I think, would be simplified, in concept at least, simplified Asian amnesia. Because it has the concept of having to run and hide and solve puzzles and explore a fucked up story. But calling it that, I feel, would um, seriously like discredit it. Not by any means that amnesia isn't a great game, but this game is, I think it's in a league of its own, and it is terrifying. Well, that's cool. Oh, you're wrong. So um, I definitely recommend you guys check that out. Yeah. All right. I might do <laughs> if I get the chance to uh, have some spare time. <laughs> but you okay. Asian, you never do any work, so you uh-huh. that's funny. Um, well, that like I said there is actually we are planning on doing another sort of horror list, but again, it's going to be quite difficult. It's about um, and people have picked up on this. They've said like, what does terrifying rooms mean? 
Um, it's one of the upcoming misses. What it is is that uh, you play. It's a when horror Tommy game. Wiseau walks up to you and starts talking. That's one of them. But oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> You're tearing me apart, Kenshin. Yeah, the, there's a room in the game where if you realize it's it's full of evil, but you know something's not right <laughs> in this room, and you don't want to spend that much time in it because you only an hour and a half. Something's gonna go wrong with it. Yeah. I'm trying to think though, like what horror games could you put? I mean, like I'm not so much of a gamer. What horror games could you put on a list of? For well, for that particular something. room thing, is that what you mean, or do you mean? Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Oh no, oh no! I thought you said something about like a horror video. I, I'm, I'm sorry, my. That's right. I, I was just talking about like relating a, it to that. Yeah. He was saying oh, that's possibly okay. what we may do, but it's uh, it's it's a little bit of a different concept than what's normally done, which is why it's cool. But it obviously will require a lot more work, which is uh, fine. Yeah. Some people said scary chases in video games. I mean, there is quite a fair of them. These are ones where you know, if you don't mash that button, you are going to get you know killed straight away. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I said, there, there's a scary chases and again. There's quite a number of them as well. It's ones where you really feel like you you know you are that character in the game and you have to run because you know you. And the only one that most people would say would be the bear from Condemned 2. And if you've seen gameplay footage of that, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and it chases you for the whole game. And um, but yeah, <laughs> the, level. the whole level. Sorry, it's yeah. not like you wake up at the very beginning. And the bear is like, <laughs> just chases you. And, but it'll politely wait for you during the cutscenes, of course. Oh yeah, it would. It makes an appearance in Condemned 3 as well. No, okay. um, Special guest star cameo. Yeah. Yeah. Featuring the bear as the bear. Well, I suppose, Bob bear is ripped. <laughs> I suppose we could also work on um. There's well, the, the good ones would be horror indie games. Again, I don't know yet whether that's a good idea or not. Um, because we in the in the scary horror games, people complain that we put too many indie games mixed with real games. If you get what I mean, and they didn't. Game's a that. fucking game. Fuck exactly. That. And um, oh, yeah, it's a. Oh, it's well, not like I we mean. said top ten like triple A horror games or something like that. Yeah, I mean, we still get all that um, negative response, and Slender shouldn't be number three. It's favorite rated. I mean, yeah, now it is, but back yeah, then, well, when it was... first came out, it was it was an original thing. It was cool. Yeah, that's right. When it first came out, it was it was different, way beyond anything that anyone else had done. And then because now the generations, I I I, I think that kind of. Uh, Overcuts. I think it was just a, it was a familiar concept introduced in a cool way, featuring a creepy as hell character that a lot of the general populace hadn't heard about. Obviously, internet geeks had, and that's why I played the game because I was a fan of the creepy pasta, and uh, so naturally having a game based off of it was pretty neat. But then everyone's like, "Oh yeah, Slender, I'm a big fan." It's like, dude, you just found out about the game. <laughs> And then, then, of course, you have the fuck asses like PewDiePie and uh, fucking Markiplier. All these people are like, the scariest game ever! And <laughs> you know, number one on YouTube, fucking PewDiePie is. And I'm like, all it is, is like, what? What's PewDiePie? Is he at 15, uh, 14 million or 15 million? I don't know. All I know is that the amount of subs is too damn high. But he doesn't need. He can just play the game. He doesn't need the face cam. I mean, yeah, he's got, he needs four thousand need... units of scare cam technology. I mean, I don't hate the guy. I'm neutral about the guy, but I just think he doesn't need to have the face cam. I mean, he can just well, do mean, the game as it to, is. To me, it, like his thing is all about like, oh, well, watch me play this game and scream like a girl. I mean, obviously, I understand why people enjoy watching horror LPs because. Of that of reason, reactions, yeah, people. Yeah, but, long, but to yeah. him, it's it's all like, okay, what's this? What's this? Oh my god! And, you know, it's like, oh shit, I'm getting mutilated in my game I'm playing. But it's like, okay, like me, yeah, I'll play horror games, and if I get scared, I get scared. But I make my let's plays to entertain people, and also, you know, have them get to know me. It's not like, oh, I'm just this this bitch who's gonna scream. No, I'm someone. I'm a fellow gamer, and I want people to enjoy my content along with me. You know, but. And with Markiplier, every like video he's got, it's like it's like scariest game ever. Three question marks. It's like no, every game still can't be the scariest game ever. It's like yeah, or it's exclamation marks. So it's just become a gimmick, and it's not entertaining because it's the same thing over and over and over. Come at me, America. Yeah, and there's that. Uh, there's loads of people who jump on bandwagon now doing their own horror games or let's plays, but they have guests in it, and they play the game for the first time. 
And when you play the horror game with a guest, you're not going to be scared, are you? you? You know, I mean, it's people that over-exaggerate when they see something like a shock value in the game. I know, I, pl- I played Outlast with Janine and it was plenty scary, but I admit that it... it when you talk to someone scary. else when playing it, you're not going to feel that scared, you know. Yeah, because part of it is the feeling of isolation. Exactly. When you play a game by yourself and you're really into the game, and you yeah. will, you do get that um, emotion yeah. feeling. But what I hate is uh, just like people who who are like, oh, to all Let's Plays, like, oh, you're a copy of fucking PewDiePie. No, PewDiePie just copied every other LP that's ever existed since LP started in like '05. Yeah, and that's the thing with horror games I, now. Yeah. I don't have much of an opinion on PewDiePie. Like, I, I wait, I got, have... I got, I got my opinion right here. You ready? Yeah. What? Oh boy. It's <laughs> <laughs> my fucking opinion. Oh boy. And you just stirred up a shitstorm. I feel no. I I'm looking at the uh, list of um. So PewDiePie has. It looks like YouTube Spotlight is about to eclipse that based on their projections. It's uh, the top 100 most subscribed to channels on YouTube, and uh, it looks like Rooster. T- so these are all pretty famous. I'm not surprised by any of this. These are all pretty good YouTubers. Right yes, Fred's here. on there, right? Um, I'm not. No. I'm not I don't seeing think, Fred. Nobody knows who oh, Fred yep. is anymore. Yeah, he just like disappeared. I got, off the face I got of the bit planet. of advice. Whoever coined the phrase "quiet as a mouse" has never stepped on one. Mm-hmm. Okay, go on. Yeah, Fred was a fucking stupid gimmick back in like. Uh, he what used 009. his basically recorded himself and then stuck his video into Windows Movie Maker and sped it up. Sped it up, yeah. yeah, and that became famous. <laughs> I, I, I guess that just goes to show how. Like basically appealing to the lowest common denominator, and all the idiots of the world will make you famous. But, yeah, I mean, look, um, at, look at pop music. But that—that's all he did. I'm not hating the guy, but that's all he did. And there's loads of people well, out the, there that does better he, work than he does. They don't get that sort of that, claim. That does better work. Yeah, that does a lot. Well, saying better. Do good, better work. Whatever. I can't speak English it properly. It kind of seem. It kind of seems though. Vi- it's viral videos, the things that start people's channels, it seems, it just kind of happen by chance. I mean, look at what does the fox say. I mean, that's a great song, but it has over a hundred million views. I mean, was anyone expecting that to be one of the most viewed videos in all of September of 2013? I don't, I don't think they were. It just, it kind of happens by chance. Yeah. The thing is, it wasn't like even supposed to be. It was like related to their comedy show. Yeah, up in so, Norway. It, so, it, and guys like uh, PewDiePie or R- Rooster Teeth or all these Let's Players, it, they there's got to be something that sets them up because there's Let's Plays. There's it seems millions of them out there. They just kind of they have to have something that sets them apart from everyone else. I, I mean, I'm a Let's Player. Yeah, and I, I have my own gaming channel as well, so. They just have something, but oh well. That's I guess that's a debate no, no, for another I, I, day. I think some of these people just got lucky, but it is a debate for another day. I don't feel like getting into all that because I, I feel like I've stirred up a shitstorm in the comments by mentioning that because all these people are gonna be like, "Oh fuck you, you pity place amazing." <laughs> <laughs> you are entitled to your opinion. That's it, and an opinion. <laughs> That's all I say. That's basically uh, again. Uh, uh, if you guys keep on subscribing, your opinion. If you want to do that, go ahead. <laughs> Kenshin's yeah. opinion. If he doesn't like PewDiePie, his opinion. We're gonna yeah, do I'm subscribing because you like PewDiePie. It just some people have very aggressive opinions, and if you don't dis- if you disagree with it, they are, they're gonna try to force. They're gonna try to force that on you. I mean, I don't. I, I don't know. It's. Yeah, they're probably going to say unsubscribe because of what you said about PewDiePie, but then um, that's what, most of the messages that I receive on the videos is that I'm unsubscribed, and I'm like, why? And that's it, they don't reply back. Um, like they I, give a valid reason of why you unsubscribe um, and a decent explanation instead of insulting yeah. everyone. Then Why do you feel the need to tell someone that? Like, it's like... Yeah, I, I had one today. I read that post one day, and just like the postman hands it to you, you open it up, and it's like, Dear Tats, I am unsubscribing. And that just ends. It's like that's faithful what it is. <laughs> By faithful um, for, if I may interrupt. Furthermore, you, you may tell us that you're going to unsubscribe, but the thing is, why would we care? 
Exactly. I yeah. mean, we, we still get, short- I mean, like, what, how much do we get? Like, 10,000 subscribers every two weeks or so? I mean, like, it doesn't really go down just because you say you're unsubscribing. But it's like, he, it's like official. It's like, I hate these people so much that I will not be at rest until I tell them I'm unsubscribing and advise them of my hatred. Like, there was one person who was like, uh, what was it? We, we read their comment on the last podcast. When yeah, was no, like, he came, he actually subscribed back to us again. <laughs> he, he's like, because of that scary video, I feel the need to unsubscribe. Maybe one day I can subscribe. I'm afraid we're going to lose him again due to this video. No, nah, he's, uh, he's cool. He sent me a message um, mm-hmm. a while back, actually, about the podcast. And, uh, oh, actually what did he say? No, I, I don't know what it is, but he, he's a nice guy. I replied to him and I said, well, thank you very much and I uh, hope you enjoy it. So We're going to lose him again after this video. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because this is, this is our uh, yeah, creepy yeah, video. Guys, that, um, now that Tinker is unfortunately back and I am spraying whipped cream on my tits, uh, uh, Tinker, tell us about oh, your here we go. Uh, creepy uh, <laughs> stories. <laughs> Um, oh, um, favorite horror video game. Game. Well, favorite horror game, but uh, there wasn't really many horror games that I um, played that actually scared me. I didn't really like Amnesia. However, when I was younger and I um, first saw my eyes on Time Splitters, Time Splitters 2, uh, I remember renting it from the video store and coming home, popping it in the uh, Xbox or, or PS2. I don't remember what we were using back then. But, um, yeah, I popped it in, and like the first level was like a zombie level, and me being a five, uh, uh, like, four to six years old it scared the hell out of me and instilled my fear of zombies that would not go away until i was like 13. <laughs> so that was the uh, siberian mm, level. yeah that siberian oh, second game yeah yeah that uh, siberian mission um it, it's still cool until the zombies started coming in and they scared the living shit out of me and when time well, splitters uh future perfect came out i mean Jesus Christ, <laughs> I couldn't get through that mission, I had to get my brother to do it, it was funny. If you lost your nut on the first level, what was your reaction on the third level when you had to go to Notre Dame? Oh, I didn't get that that far. Oh, because that level was just infested with them, so... We'll see. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you didn't get that far. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't get that um, far. Being a mental so, ward. <laughs> I actually have an interesting story to tell about a scary experience I had that, um... Games or real it, life? It's related to games. Okay. But it was terrifying, and, and um, it's kind of funny. It was, it, it's 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 somewhat reminiscent of Tinker's story in effect, but not as gay. It's actually much more gay. Um, first time I played like a violent game, shooter game. I wait, wait. <laughs> it was. Um, <laughs> did you guys like that? No response. So obviously yeah. no. So just carry on. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was. It was for Christmas. It was a Star Wars game, actually. I was uh, maybe five, six, seven years old. I don't know. It was a Star Wars game because I was and is a Star Wars fanboy. And so my parents got me um, Star Wars Dark Forces 2. And um, I had no idea what I was in for with this. I just, uh, okay, whatever, Star Wars game, awesome, sweet. And, uh, of course, little did I know that it was the really awesome game that it turned out to be. And so... Um, the game starts, I'm like, okay, whatever, but 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 you know, and then you get the intro cutscene, and in the Dark Forces games, like, the cutscenes were, like, fully acted and stuff, like, as if they were a part of a movie, you know, real actors, real filming, and stuff like that, and it was done, like, up to Lucas quality. And in the first scene, the main bad guy of the game, uh, Jarek, uh, like, he captures this Jedi named Ron and asked him about this place called the Valley of Jedi, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he, Ron tries to break out, and he, like, cuts a dude in half, and then Jarek, like, paralyzes him and kills him. And, I mean, obviously it all looked pretty badass, but here's me, eight-year-old me, seeing this, and I'm getting freaked out. I'm like, oh, my God, Star Wars was never this intense. <laughs> and it's a clusterfuck, but I'm like, okay, well, whatever, you know, but intense intro but whatever and then you get another cutscene the intro cutscene to the first level the uh, double cross on Nar Shada and um, it starts off with the main character Kyle Katarn he's watching a holograph video of him and his father blah 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 uh, his father was a Jedi but Katarn is a mercenary on and on and on there's this guy there's this robot who's an antagonist for the first half of the game named uh, AT88 and uh, he works for the Sith, as we find out. And basically, um, he sells out Kyle to his mercs because he works for Jarek. Jarek wants Kyle dead. And so, um, like, and then the 
they're grand actually they they point a gun at kyle's head and start like threatening him and stuff again eight-year-old me i'm like oh my god and so he grabs the gun from one of them throws him on the table points the gun at him and he's like i'm not planning on leaving i have some information i need to get from your friend 88 and then it gets into the game and i like that they add the extra detail of the fact that now the grand like uh he convulses a little bit on the table and goes out unconscious so i get into the game and um I see this thing, and I didn't realize it was the Grand, because actually in the first version of the game, they screwed up and used the model of a, a Tusken Raider for the corpse. <laughs> Tusken Raiders didn't show up until three levels in, and so I'm like, oh my god. And um, and so this thing's like, Rrrr! and I'm like shooting at because they give you a pistol to start with. And I'm like, oh my god, I just killed this thing! <laughs> and then uh, the game added a cool detail of having uh, civilians. In the game, and depending on how you behave towards them, you could leave them alone. I know or... what's going, and you obviously you wanted to murder every single one of them. <laughs> I did. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I know but you there, too well. But I didn't know at the time. I didn't understand that this guy was a civilian. I thought he was like some bad guy or something. So he's standing around, and he and he's like, I don't want any trouble. I'm like booting him around by walking <laughs> into him and stuff. And so I shoot him, and he, and he dies. He's like, oh, boom! And his corpse hits the ground with this, like, loud thud. And I'm like, oh my god, I just killed an innocent man! <laughs> and I, I was freaking out! And then Sonic came out of your and, TV and killed you. <laughs> no. And so then I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, alright. It's okay, you can tell us. Yeah, and so You're not then gonna I'm get like, arrested, don't worry. <laughs> I'm like, I need to press on. It's okay so to be a ghost. We won't call it a Ghostbusters. <laughs> I go into the next room, and that's where the first two enemies of the game are. And uh, they're both grand, and they got, you know, E11 blasters, which is, you know, your, uh, pretty much your assault rifle for the game. You know, not fully automatic, it's just your normal gun. But uh, I, and I get in there, and they start shooting at me. I'm like, oh my god, I'm getting shot at. And I'm screaming, I'm freaking out, I'm shooting at them. I don't even know, I'm running through the level. Like, I start shooting at windows and hitting myself because of the ricochet. <laughs> I, I'm getting scared that I'm, my shields are going down, so my screen's changing all kinds of colors, green and yellow and red when it's hurting my health. I'm running, I fall off a ledge, and I fall here, and I kill this guy, and I'm screaming, freaking out. There's a fan up in the ceiling, and a, a, a Rodian drops through it. And I'm just, I'm shitting my pants here because I'm getting shot at i'm killing people and i'm like oh my god this is the most traumatizing thing in the world and i didn't touch the game for probably another year half a year and then when i went into it again uh, i discovered that it was an absolutely incredible game I was too scared of the single player, so what I would do, I would literally just play the multiplayer, but not like actual, like the multiplayer itself, because that was back when I had 56k, and uh, like, it wasn't, fuck, it wasn't even 56k, it was like 24k, and so I would literally play on multiplayer maps alone, by myself, making up my own stories and just shooting at shit, with no other people, because I didn't know how to connect to a server, I was fucking 8 years old, for God's sake. And so I would just walk around by myself on multiplayer maps, because convincing myself I was entertained by it, playing Capture the Flag matches by myself, because I was too scared to play the real game. <laughs> hey, Tats, um... It, it... I have a floor meeting going around um, on my campus, uh, the World Series was last night, and um, since we live in Massachusetts, um, the campus kind of got crazy, so it's already if I, I got to drop out for like 20 minutes, and can I come back in, or? <laughs> that should be okay. <laughs> I don't see how that's right. a problem. Um, All right, yeah. man. The door's right, just stop. on your right there, if you want to head out that don't way. Don't let it hit your ass on the way out. Yeah. All right, man. Watch out for the uh, cleaning lady. She's on the left hand side. Watch out for the spikes on the other end of the door that will. Yeah, she you. she shouted uh, some pretty mean things at me. On the way but, in. Uh, <laughs> she, she shouted some mean things at you, but she yeah. just pointed her ass at you and like screamed and salt out her mouth. All right, you guys, I'll be back. Okay then, it's cool. Um, I've never really screamed at a movie or anything like that. You know, I'm like, whenever I watch a horror movie, I'm that guy going like, oh shit, oh hell no. I'm not even kidding, I will do that. I'll be like, the, I'll, it'll be silent in there, and that will be me, and everyone will laugh. It's ha it happened during, uh, what was it? The, um, oh, what's that movie? It's, um, it was a remake of a very popular, um, spoof movie <laughs> that was about horror. Oh, yeah. Um, it was, uh, it's probably something dead. You know, Evil Dead. Yeah, it was um Evil Dead remake. I was like, oh hell no, oh no, oh no, this this shit's fucked up. 
You know, I mean, like, if you see a book where the binding is made out of human skin, you don't touch that shit. You put it into a fire, and you hope to never see it again. True. You know, I mean, like, that's just common sense. You don't sit there and read it out loud. And, like, read it in your head at least. I mean, like, Tats, when you're alone in a room, do you read books out loud? Uh, I whisper them out loud. <laughs> Tat, I've always Tat. done it. I don't know why. I just have it. Makes me feel as if you're sort of you are God in that sense, or you are actually betraying it. You feel as if you're that character. So the, I've always done that. Ever since I was young, I used to read books out. Well, usually out loud, or just whisper them, so I don't feel like an idiot in a public place. Ah, um, oh, shit. Uh, Kenshin. Yeah. Um, I remember one time when I had amnesia. And in the beginning of the game, there's that Wait, little... Wait, you, rem you remember your amnesia? Yes, I, rem I, I remember I have amnesia. <laughs> anyway, um, in the beginning of the game, there's this, uh, like, very early on, there's this level where you have to, like, um, part where you have to keep on st stepping on boxes or something to yeah, avoid the... Yeah, with the Karanek. Yeah, with the, to avoid that little water monster. The Karanek. Later in the game, you get to this weird sewer setting, and my friend, who's being a dick to me in the Skype call, decides to tell me that the Karanek is in the water, too. In that area, but it is. If you have enough, I learned if later that if, if you if have enough if, insanity, yeah. Yeah, if your if your sanity's low enough, the Karanak will be there. Yeah. However, he was he 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 um told me later that he was bullshitting me. But anyway, um he um told me there, and I'm seeing her walking across the things, and I I would get into the water, and I would scare the shit out of myself because I would start running while I'm in there, and I would I would mistake You'd my own footsteps. own footsteps. Yeah, I would mistake my own footsteps for the Karanak, and I would be screaming. And like pissing my pants during that part. That's like the only time the game legitimately scared me, and that was due to a practical joke my friend was playing on me. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, like, if you're if you're normal sanity, like, okay, maybe a little bit of a headache, you'll be fine. If you're middle sanity, like, eh, you're uh, you're kind of getting there, you know, hands shaking, you'll see a hallucination. You'll see the Karanek walk, but he won't be there. If you're dot dot dot, the Karanek will be there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I learned that later, though. But, yeah, this scared the hell out of me. I'm, I didn't really find Amnesia all that scary until I got to that part. I mean, like, I scared... I think the the key to horror, actually, is more about um, actually leaving it up to the player's mind or the viewer's mind to scare themselves. Because, uh, to be honest, I think we can scare ourselves a hell of a lot better than a movie can or some cheesy CGI effect. That's what Looking like at you, Mama. Who's me? Amnesia did that pretty well. The Gatherers served as a scare, but to me, what made me like Amnesia the most was just by the end of it how fucked up the story got. That's yeah. what I liked. That story, th the ending was uh, pretty good. Yeah. Well, there's three endings. Yeah. I, I can't remember which one I got, but I don't care. I chose the one where you throw the dude's head into the portal. Th that's Spoilers? Like the Jesus, I don't even beat well, it yet. Well, uh, it does well. That's not. That doesn't tell you much of anything, dude. I know. I already know. That. I pretty much know. I saw some let's play of it. Not I mean, come on. If if you're watching this, you've probably seen some let's play of it or something like that. Even if you haven't, that literally means nothing to you. Anyway, I'm trying to think here of another. Just, um, what what's your scariest um moment when you were playing a video game? <laughs> I did have one actually. I completely forgot it now. Um. I was just about to say it, and, um, right, yeah, there was two, um, and one of them was that, those damn mannequins from Bioshock, um, the plaster, oh, you mean the, the plaster, the, the, the plaster, the plaster splices, yeah, there's a bit when you go to, uh, Fort Frolic, I believe, and you that's, go down these set of stairs, my, uh, that's my favourite level in Bioshock, it is, it is now my favourite level, but you didn't know, because, um, this is before I played Condemned, see, so, um, and, really, yeah, and, I went down there, and uh, you, you, you see there's that tonic down there, and you go down there, and yeah. you pick it up, and you turn around, and you think, oh, there's a mannequin, I don't remember that being there, and then you're like, okay, turn the corner, there's another one, you're like, hmm, what the hell's going on, and then, then you're like, okay, and then, what, are these real, and then you walk up to them, and they come alive, and then they start doing these acrobatic gymnastic things in front of you, like, shit, and then you really, you know, treat everything in that game, because everything in that level is some sort of plastic, but you don't know whether they're going to be there or not. You know, and they're all, yeah. everything is, and there's that part of the toilet. Um, you go in the toilet, and then there's like a whole monument of them just standing there. And you think, are you going to come alive at some point, or are you actually real plaster splices? You know, 
So there's that part of the game that freaked me out. Um, you I thought it was me. freaky when you found a plaster one, and um, you pick up an audio diary right next to him. Sanders talks about the plaster uh, stuff, and it just whatever you say, I forget oh, what it was, but it just oh. unnerved me so badly. Hey, I'm back. Hey. So I'm sorry. Black man. Sorry, I kind of interrupted. Bioshock. Uh, I remember that game. Bioshock. I, I the, remember uh, when I first rented it. Splicer, the, the statue eye splices that look like mannequins in that game. Um, that oh, kind of freaked me out. And again, the second one would be Condemned. Obviously, you know what I'm talking about. The first time you see those mannequins walk off the podium and start attacking you with their breathing. <laughs> that is kind of freaky. You're dead. Time, man. You're dead. Yeah, and they start whispering stuff, and you're like, dude, it's kind of creepy. Yeah. I remember Bioshock when I first rented that game. I was, um, I, it was a bit younger again. I rented it from the Blockbuster. Wow, this is ancient <laughs> history, man. Yeah. Um, and when I first got the game, uh, I heard there was so much stuff about it, you know, about it being scary and stuff like that. So, you know, and the, the whole, you know, being a little kid, you don't know much about the internet. You don't look at much stuff. All I knew is what X Play told hey, me. How, how old were you? I, I can't remember. It, um, but yeah, anyway, I was looking at the little how cover old are you thing. How you now? Wait. I'm, you're my age, aren't you? Yeah, I'm like uh, 16 in a week right. or two. Oh, oh. Anyway, so um... You're 15, so you're... That means you're technically like around three years younger than me, so... I played Bioshock first when I was 12. That was yeah, so I was probably like out. 7 or 8. Yeah, you were probably like 8 or 9, so okay. Underage? That, yeah, yeah underage. Yeah, I went to go play it, and the first thing I see on the box is that, like, little <laughs> girl, that creepy-ass little girl, and oh, the so giant, sorry. you know, bio, um... Big daddy. Big, daddy. big daddy, yeah, the big daddy. And I, I load daddy. up the game, and that first intro sequence, dude, I see that guy, he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in the beginning, I'm, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave that little pod. I sat there for 15 minutes in the little pod, hoping something will happen. Why'd you play it if you were that young? I don't know, I was a cool. bad kid. So, yeah, so eventually I got the balls, and I turned on the Xbox MP3 player so that I could listen to something that wasn't creepy-ass music. <laughs> I never Teddy people. I never yeah, it was it was like some country uh, or something like that. And oh I would god, continue, that's awful. I would continue at like the slowest pace ever. I'm walking like two inches an hour, and eventually my dad walks in the room. And go, and my dad's like, "What are you doing?" I'm going like, "Oh, I'm playing Bowser." He's going like, "Really?" I'm like, yeah, I have to turn on the music though because it's that freaking scary. He's like, what? "You should be playing this." I'm going like, "You know what? You're right. Can I play like Oblivion? Because I want to play that game." <laughs> I never understood why people found Bioshock scary, but I mean, I can see why. We put it on the list. I mean, it's not like. It is. I mean, if I were to play it now, I wouldn't find it scary. But you know, being that young it's with a zombie, I, I thought Splacers were zombies, and that that would just like done deal. Well, that's what we're... Then we did well. say it was yeah. back then. It was that, like we said in the scary horror games. It does have scary moments, but like I said, we we update the scary horror games. We're not going to put Bioshock on there. I think the concept of Bioshock is the scary. Yeah, game. that that that's terrifying. But like um, the I idea remember, of the game. Yeah, that's the terrifying thing: how humans could become mutated into just that. What's scary drugs. to me is Ayn Rand's beliefs. <laughs> Ayn Rand is scary, but um, she no, the, she the, is the, a scary you know, lady. She looks like my math teacher. I, I think Ayn Rand's a dude. <laughs> <laughs> Off topic. Stay on topic. Wait, is Ayn Rand a dude or, n or a chick? No, she. Oh, no, it's a girl. Really? Okay. Well, um, <laughs> the only thing about Bioshock that ever scared me was um, the first teaser trailer for it. It was uh, it was one that was shot in first person, where um, you know, assumedly Jack tries to uh, you know, harvest a little sister and stuff like that, and he gets the shit beat out of him by a big daddy. Yeah, the CGI gets, trailer, yeah. Yeah, get, gets a drill through his hand, he sticks the uh, plasma in him, shoots the insects, insects off. out, yeah. Yeah, and then in the end gets a drill through the stomach. At the time, ugh, I wasn't that much of a gore hound, so that just traumatized me. I was like, oh, this is so Yeah, because back then we didn't really see that much, you know? I uh, yeah, it was. I was like, oh I'm mean, like the best we got was like you know like those cartoony gory games, you know that were very cartoony, but that was like realistic for its time, you know. Well, I mean, by then Soldier of Fortune and shit had come out, but we were coming of age in the video game world where we were learning of violent video games. Yeah, yeah. and I only started playing violent video games when I was 18. Literally, I was back then 
Grand Theft Auto. I started when I was like 12. Grand Theft Auto and Death Rally used to scare the crap out of me, and I would not touch them. Even Red Alert scared me. I don't know how that even works. Why did I grew up in Grand Theft Auto, so it's okay. I, I, it just to like, me when I used to watch. The cops would chase you. When, no, when I used to play Grand Theft Auto or even see someone play, it just felt. Back, and this sounds so stupid it is, but back then it used to feel real because the way it people reacted, bad. the traffic, how they, you know, you never seen stuff like that before in a game like that. Top down perspective in, in a, a city that looked like it could be real, of all these people in it, you could get all this stuff happening it, it, to me it just felt you know real and stuff and that's why i didn't like the fact that you had the freedom to do what you want and stuff i didn't really like that so it kind of freaked me out and it's only now when i recently so uh, you are it. a um so you're definitely a bottom then i want <laughs> well no 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 um i remember similar to that um when i was younger well uh, when i first saw adult swim um i i couldn't get five minutes into it like first off it, you would be watching like Cartoon Network, like Pokemon or something like that, and then it, it would like end, and then all you would see is this black screen with the like white lettering, with huh? and yeah. it, it was just creepy. I had no idea what the hell this was, and then the thing that proceeded after that was like two gangster dudes like stabbing each other. I think it was like Adventure Bros or something. I don't know. All I saw was like two people like stabbing each other, talking in like um a Spanish. And that was scary as so hell. I just turned it off. I'm like, you know what? I don't even want to stay up late anymore. <laughs> oh, we shifted you know over to scary cartoons and movies now, aren't we, from games? Well, you know what yeah. scared me was actually, um, yeah. uh, the, you know, I'm not Break sure if any of you ever watched, um, <laughs> oh, God. I'm not sure if any of you ever watched a Bill Nye the Science Guy growing up. Yeah, Bill Nye, your mom's a guy. Never but in he, England, unfortunately. But he would always Never end his really. episodes with a song that was typically a parody of a pre-existing song. He parodied The Police. He parodied, uh... I can't think of anything else. <laughs> he parodied a lot of good stuff. And um, some of the songs, actually, I don't know what it was. They, they scared me. I don't know what it was. It was just, it was the, the music video for it, the song. I don't know. It just, it scared me. And I was, I would literally get scared to the point where I would, I, my mom had like seven uh, episodes on VHS of Bill Nye for me. Now I'd watch like four of those. No, I watched five of those because the sixth one's ending song scared me and I would never get past it. And I was never able to see the episodes that were beyond it. And so uh, I finally worked my way up to doing it. Um, yeah, Teletubbies you know, scared me when I was very young. The, the vacuum. Inky winky. I, I would Dude, get to the part where that sweet. vacuum would come in, and la, la. I would just be like, "Hell no!" <laughs> just, just no. Teletubby. Naughty no no. Oh, oh, just the vacuum <laughs> though. I mean, like, seriously, what the hell is that thing? It's new new. I don't know. Um, it's a. What's well, scary is seeing a disembodied a baby's head as a son laughing all the time. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, seriously. It's like it's like that show's on drugs. Mm. Who here has seen The Conjuring? I saw so that. Actually, something that's actually interesting. Hair um, is fuck tinker. Um, now that we <laughs> talked about scary video games and all like like that, scary experiences. How about in honor of Halloween, especially? Um, favorite horror movie. I feel that's a good refresher of the discussion. Um, any of you want to take it first? Um, I'll say straight off the bat, I can think of two that I really liked. Uh, 13 Ghosts, uh, still one of my favorite films of all time, and that's the one where they, the family um, has this, they get it from their uncle, apparently, who's like, it's like a, some sort of house, glass house, and what they don't know is that in the basement, uh, there's actually ghosts in there, like, from different eras. Um, and that's where I'm going to leave that there. I really like that film. That was good. The other film is a... Uh, it's all done by Camcorder. You guys may remember it as Rec. R-E-C. Oh, I love Rec. Um, it is dubbed. It's all it's all Spanish, but it is dubbed in English. Um, I watched uh, I think version. it's really good. The, the, well, the, the other two, Rec 2, and I think there's a third one. Don't know much about it, but the Rec 2 I didn't find very good. But Rec 1 is a definite must because it is scary. Um, there is, like, you do the camera does get chased a lot, and... You just don't know what's going to happen. It's a There's good a lot one. of jump scares in it as well, and I recommend that film. But Wreck is really um, good. To people who would wonder... Um, and don't watch Quarantine, because that's the... Yeah, uh, th remake. that's what I was going to say. As For Americans who aren't familiar, Quarantine is the American remake. And if you hated Quarantine, or you liked Quarantine, either way, I'd recommend giving Wreck a try, because it's much better. So, Tinker, or NDL, whatever you guys I'll want to do. I'll take the reins on this one. Yeah, um, I'll give it to Tinker. Yeah, um, I remember I two movies. Uh, when I was younger, just because when I was younger, I watched this one without my dad knowing. It w they had a little Watch TV premiere of 28 Days Later. And oh, man. 
I love that oh, movie. Man. It scared the hell out of me. You know, again, my major movie. fear is zombies, and the reason why I thought Splicers were zombies because <laughs> in this movie they were Speedy I Gonzales, right I, I yeah. believe. And yeah, I love Twenty Eight Days Later. And Twenty Eight Weeks Later wasn't that good. I didn't like that much. But Twenty Eight Days Later, I think, was still the best. Yeah, I and then I um after times. that, if you're gonna talk about recent times, The Conjuring. That that movie is probably the best um, horror movie to come out within like the like last three four years. There isn't really that many good stuff out there nowadays because we got CGI. But you know, it, there, the, I'm just gonna say that The Conjuring leaves a lot to, to the mind, and there is no real like CGI crap or um you know stupid fake looking stuff. Most of the horror is done through you know what you believe, you know like what what's not there. And it, it scared the hell out of me. I mean, like, I was watching with my mom a few days ago. She screamed at a part. <laughs> mm. Nice. <laughs> Want to play hide and clap? Oh, God. And scared the hell out mind, of me when she screamed. I was going to say, Tanger, if you don't mind me going with that, um, I, I, got, I have two fresh in my mind right now. And one yeah, of go them for it. is... One of them is The Conjuring, because I'm from New England, and these New England horror films kind of stick with me. The Conjuring and The Haunting in the Haunting in Connecticut. Oh, The Haunting in Connect Connecticut. That was a great movie. Um, I thought it was a terrible movie, but it, it did its work in um, at least scaring me, because it, it doesn't take a lot to scare me. And... Um, Tinker shut down. <laughs> I'm back. I was considering your model and the hours a vampire lord, which is quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Tinker. Kind of ironic here. right what, there. What was the other one? I heard 28 days later. And 28 days later in the Conjuring. And All Andy right. Elves is the Conjuring as well. He said he liked yeah. that. The right. Conjuring yeah. is a really good one. Yeah, I, it, that the scary parts actually scared me twice, even doing a rewatch. Um. I also yeah. would like to say one more um, that I liked, and that was Cabin in the Woods. I like that film. Oh, yeah, I don't know that if you would count that as a everyone, horror movie. Everyone yeah. seems to like the cat, but I wasn't a huge. It wasn't really. Kid, it's not supposed to be scary. It's supposed to be a parody of all these crappy movies that are coming but, out. Yeah, but but it an was intelligent good. parody. It was sort of a twist on it. You know, that's what I liked about that. If, you, if, thought, you uh, think it's going to be yeah, yeah, been there, done, but then it takes this unnatural. Yeah, twist. It's an intelligent parody in satire. Mm -hmm. Um, Sean did yeah, that sorry, was I good too. If we're going to talk parody comedic thing. I, I had to go and get some more food because I got a sub from Wegmans. Not the second half downstairs. But, alright, well, I imagine everyone would want to know what uh, what Kenshin's favorite horror movie is considering how fearless he is. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> human centipede. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm calling it human. Yeah, the only thing, the only scary, my friend says the only scary thing about the human centipede is the acting. <laughs> I'd agree. Actually, I think the idea connection. of getting your mouth sewn onto someone's anus is pretty scary. Um, not yeah. not not because the movie said it's scary, just because I mean, like, it's say, like if you had mm -hmm. to get your mouth sewn onto someone's anus, I mean, like that sounds like something that your friend would dare you to do when you're drunk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then but you're going like, ah, oh, no, that would never happen. But then this I'm movie like, is like, you yeah. know what? We're gonna do that. All right, so fuck that movie. But I have, um, dude. Three... Do you want to know what would be a great movie? What fucking... is it, bro? If if we so <laughs> if we want <laughs> if we so mouths on the people's anuses and then made yeah, a bro. movie, everyone will bro. watch it. Yeah, bro. Let's fucking do it. Oh yeah, yeah. see the ball. Yeah. In it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Kenshin, as you were saying. Yeah. My, three, yeah, my favorite horror movies. There's three of them. Two are of the same franchise. Um. I like the Hellraiser movies. Hellraiser 1 and Hellraiser 2, Hellbound. Um, the rest can just go fuck themselves. Um, have you guys seen Hellraiser? Um, I have. Uh, recently, um, I've been spoiled by modern day you know, effects. But yeah, I can see how it could be scary back then. Dude, okay. I watched it last year. I wasn't scared by it, but I, I thought it was great. It came out in 84, I think. And the sequel came out not too long after, and I think the effects in that movie were better than some today. D well, um, yeah, they didn't use a stupid CGI crap. Yeah, Hellraiser was um, a very <sighs> original concept, because it wasn't, you know, you didn't have smart-ass Freddy Cougar, or you didn't have, like, you know, unknowing, 
you will not unknowing, but you didn't have like bad guy who never talked, never had personality, just kill, kill, kill. Pinhead and the other Cenobites, like especially Pinhead, they displayed signs of intelligence and like ability of deception and reasoning. Like they were actually like, like they were solid enemies, characters, and their designs were so cool. And it was it, the stories they told were complicated. Well, I mean, complicated by horror movie standards of the time. I mean, the Cenobites, Pinhead, Chatter. Uh, the female Butterball, like they all, they 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 had like the sadomasochism, bondage, leather stuff going on, pain, pleasure thing, and they were creepy. I mean, they had the chains and everything, and they were like demonic. It was just so badass. The first one was awesome, and the second one I think was even more awesome, purely because it just seriously took everything that made the first one great and made it even better, just up to the gore up to the intensity and it just it it was awesome i loved it and you know it's not even like an entirely thing where like you know you watch a freddy movie or a jason movie it's like damn that's stupid you know it's like okay you know whatever stupid entertainment to me i found hellraiser to be actually like not scary per se because it doesn't scare me but it was actually a compelling watch and uh, so those two are favorites but probably my favorite horror movie just basic as horror is one that i guarantee you guys haven't heard about and it's a shame because it's a great movie it's called I Never Left the White Room. Uh, you Doesn't guys really probably never that. heard of it. You probably yeah. wouldn't because it's, it's an indie horror, low-budget film. Um, yeah, can you tell me about it? I may have heard of it. It sounds familiar. Um, it's uh, basically, it's pretty much, almost all the acting is done by one guy. There's a couple other actors, you know, maybe three other actors. But it's mainly on one guy, um, the same guy who directed it as well. And... Uh, the idea is he's uh, he's in asylum for, as we learn, murder, and uh, at the very beginning of the movie, he ha- he we see him that he had a uh, a razor, you know, just a you know a small little razor that he uh, had snuck into his cell with him, and he takes it out and he cuts his wrist and he starts bleeding and stuff, and so from there we assume that either through the rest of the movie he's dying and seeing these things or this is him journeying through hell i believe it's the latter him journeying through hell because after he dies he starts seeing all these strange things these hallucinations and goes on these he he ends up like crawling out through a hole in the corner of his cell and starts going all these strange dimensions and weird things reliving memories and distorted ways and the thing that gets me about it it's it, it's low budget but it makes amazing use of it's um what it does have the audio is creepy and haunting there's a lot of voices over things a lot of creepy chanting uh there's a filter uh effect applied over almost every shot to make it feel like a nightmare-like experience and it's only about an hour long so it doesn't outstay its welcome and as you learn just how fucked up this guy was and explore his hell along with him and find out about him and the people around him and what led up to what ultimately happened. And it's not like, a, oh my god, what did he do? It's just, a, oh my god, this guy's fucked up. How much more fucked up can he get? He's traveling through his hell. You understand who he is and what he did. And it's just like, this guy's fucked. And then you see the people around him, how fucked up they are. It's a little bit gory at times, not too much. But the fact that it's just, it's, it draws you in and keeps you there because it's extremely, extremely, extremely psychologically based. It's not like, boo. It's like, oh my god, this is really weird, and this is really fucking creepy. It gets you like that, and it's just, it's awesome. It feels like a nightmare put on video. Um, it's, it's like I said, it's a, uh, it's a low-budget indie thing, so you have to get it from the director's site if you want it. I highly recommend it. It's, um, it's amazing. It's, it's creepy. There's actually a jump scare in it that got me. Totally unexpected. But it's creepy. Paced well. It's visually, it's awesome because it just fucks with your head, you know, not for epileptics for sure. It's trippy, it's bizarre, and it's it's amazing. Um, so if we're going to talk about a more of an indie film, a movie that I saw a while back was um, called, uh, I think it was called The Killing Room, and that's why I thought you were talking about it at first. It's uh, The Killing. Th- well, basically, um, the movie starts out with, like, um, a bunch of guys, like, just signing up for this, like, government ad to basically answer a few questions they're surveying to get, like, 200 bucks. A uh, simple deal, right? But then, what, but then, this game, this movie, like, right out of the back pulls this 180, the person's like, alright, so I'm gonna ask you the first question, um, how many of you finish your, uh, uh, thing? And then everyone raises their hand and going, like, done. Okay, the guy pulls out a gun, shoots one of them in the head, and then walks out of the room and locks the door. 
over the intercom, that's you really hear like a saw esque voice. It's like every ten minutes, we're gonna ask you a question. Whoever gets it wrong will be killed. That's amazing. and like every ten minutes, someone gets killed, and you know it's all it's, it's just the way that they handle it and stuff like that. It's a Was great it movie, good? and it has oh, yeah. the most WTF what the fuck endings ever. I right. mean, like, like I mean, like, oh my god, it got me. I, m- I remember watching it with my older brother, and oh, <laughs> dude, we so at I the end we're going like, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> S- Sinister. Uh, have you guys seen Sinister? Uh, I no, uh, it does look good there. Yeah. Um, there was a, a scene in there where the guy's looking through the tapes, and then one of the tapes was called Sleepy Time. My brother was oh. stoned. And dude. he was like, he he was like, dude, dude, that sh- sleepy time. He's like in a movie theater, go like, is that really just sleepy time? Holy sh! You know, and that was my brother doing that, and I'm sitting there, go like, dude, this is gonna be great. But when I actually saw Sleepy Time, I was like, kind of disappointed. Well, remember the, uh, remember uh, the scene from Sinister where you know it's right after a build up to a big scare, and nothing happens, and you know like. You can see the picture of like the ghost, whatever thing it is, on the computer screen, and it just fucking turns and looks at you. Oh, God. Everyone, everyone in the theater that I was in, I was seeing it with a couple friends. Just and they gasped. all screamed. <laughs> and a woman just screamed like she stood up, like, "What is that thing? What is that thing? No one knows what that is." And I'm like, I don't know, but it was Shut terrifying. Shut up, lady. <laughs> Yeah, that kind of reminds me of that moment when I watched um, Insidious, the very first thing, this ghost is like, apparently there's, what I liked about Insidious is that there is this part where this lady walks into the baby room, baby's room, and she sees, like, at first you don't notice anything, you know, because uh, the thing's like kind of transparent, but like, you look at it for a second, like, I almost missed this at first, but at the very last second I caught it, there's this dude that's just standing over, and then, like, at the last second he looks up and smiles, like, not looking at the lady, but looking at you. And you're going like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it scared the living shit out of everyone. I almost missed it. I watched Insidious five times. Love that that's movie. A, that's a good one. And since we are um, on the topic of ghosts and paranormal as such... I figure, since it's Halloween, uh, we'll discuss anything, you know, paranormal related that we've had any possible events occur with us or that we've experienced or heard others have experienced. You guys got anything? Do you oh, know about me already. Yes, Tats, you're going first. Got, yeah, Tats, you're going first. I, I know I know you do, but I wanted to make it seem like I was being inquisitive, but I know you got some. Yeah, um, right. We all plan on making a top extraordinary human powers and abilities. And, right. um, and um, quick disclaimer, um, for people who say that, oh, you know, this is bullshit, whatever, you know, just can it. This is just for fun and entertainment, so whether or not it's true, whatever, but it's just for fun. So if you have something to say about it, but not being real or whatever, no one cares. But, yeah, like I said, um, when I first, uh, there was something I saw a long time ago, it was to do with magic, or I can't remember what it was, it was something about some movie had it, or some show had it. Um, I was, when I was really young as well, and I was really interested in what this sort of supernatural thing was, my dad told me about it. So, I, I was about seven, or maybe six, I can't remember, I would go to the library, I would study what this was books about it there's not much about it they kept saying not much about it and i would research more and more into it um we'll go to like other areas of the library other travel everywhere. what is it it's what they call telekinesis is not obviously moving things in your mind obviously it's a very big thing everyone some skeptics would say it's not real some people would say it is real um there was that thing that said oh if it is real james randy would um expose you for it the thing is, James Randi, um, he there's people that at, actually have showed him um, that it is possible, but he would deny it and say it's fake, and he would even actually apparently walk out of the room because he can prove it. He, could, he actually was proven or whatever. So, but anyway, I went and um, yeah, exactly, rage quit because he know that. Um, so he would refuse to ha- outright hand the money over because he know he's lost. Um, so, um, but like I said, this thing about when I researched it about telekinesis, I. The more I went into it, the more I got excited about it, and the more I thought I'd try it out for myself. Um, and 
all I can say is yes, it is possible, but not in the level of degree that you might expect. You're not going to like lift someone up or lift a car up or lift. Not going to be really Mr. Heavy. Magneto. No, that's not possible. What is possible though is something that is small, um, like a pen or something or Didn't anything. Did you do that thing with a spoon? Or a sp yeah, or that. Like I said, but that's to do with heat. That's like heat molecules. Not nothing to do with. Um, but it's complicated stuff. All I can say is that it's not good for you if you try it. It does exist, I say, but it's not good for you to try it. Because when I used to do it, I'd pass out for hours at a time. Um, and you just feel drained and everything, as if you just don't want to move. Um, and I tend not to do it, but I have videos of it um, that cannot be explained. Um, but that's all I'm going to say. That's, and like I said, there's a really, I haven't done it for a long time because um, I try not to because it makes me feel really depressed when I do it. Drains everything out of you. Um, I'll try if people want to see a video of it, I can probably... If you want to make Tats depressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all want to torture Tats. I could that should be like a at some game. point. I don't know when, but if you guys want to see videos of it, I can show you it. Um, Fuck yeah, they would. Yeah, uh, but there's going to be people like, eh, it's not real. But there was a very strange part um, that happened not too long ago actually um is this where we get to the paranormal <laughs> yeah no it's weird okay because i've gone where I, where I work i'm not gonna say where i work but it's where i work there is a he mcdonald's works at place. Fox Face Incorporated. there's a <laughs> there's a mcdonald's restaurant next to mine um next to my office place whatever the hell place of employment <laughs> place of employment yeah so i go there we're gonna call it greedy place. corp and i've been there <laughs> I've been to that place all the time. I go to lunch all the time. I know it's been there for God knows how many years. So I know, and I, I, I've got in there. Open the door fine because that's what they do. They're not auto, they're not automatic doors. They, you know, they're just ones you pull open and stuff. So I am in there. Okay. Get my get my lunch and everything. Then I go walking out. You know, just about to walk out the door. There's the map there, and all of a sudden the door opens by itself, and I'm like, okay. I never remember there being an automatic door. And I was like, okay, I can't be right. And I looked around, and I was like, yeah, it's probably one of those, you know, disabled buttons you press. And I was like, I had that grin on, like, yeah, it's probably the... I was like, well, no, there isn't one there. So wh how... Why is the other door not open? Why that specific door open? That just one side of the door open? If that was the case, both door, both sides of the door would open. Why just that one side of the door? Because it's one of those double doors. And so I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I just walked out the door, and then it's still held open, but no one's there. And I was thinking, I was like, okay, yeah, it's gonna close at some point, right? And all these other people walking by as if nothing's happened. I'm like, they see that, right? They obviously see that door is just open by itself. And then I just, then I, you know, I walk away, and then the door goes like that and closes. I'm like, okay, that, that's so that's a paranormal bit. I'm like, did I do that? Did I make it open myself, or did it just somehow open by itself? by a ghost so that's something that's really bothered me for a couple of months how that, that door is. just opened wow. if it's not it's like i said if it's not a um disabled button on the door how on earth did that open because one of those it's quite a strong door as well it's not as if it's a wooden door i also door, don't so. think it would be open for that long either yeah exactly yeah like you know none of the automatic doors that it, it's it's just a reasonable amount of time yeah that, it was about yeah. a minute and a half if you were oh, no, to they, do it they, they don't stay open that long yeah, yeah. it was out for a while and like, people were just walking through as if casually it was fine you know and no one stopped to think, hang on, why is that open like that? You know, because sometimes you think the door is open. Sometimes if you hold a door and put it on the mat, the door will stay open, doesn't it? Yeah. No, it wasn't like that because there's no mat there on the outside. And it opened it's just by concrete. itself. Exactly. And no one, no one else saw that. And it wasn't a windy day, was it? No, it was sunshine. It was just during the summer, mind you know. So I'm well, like, you can still have wind during the summer. You no, know, but this. No, there's no way the wind can physically get to it because it's not like I said it's, it's all oh yeah it would have yeah because okay yeah it would have gone outward and the wind wouldn't have pushed it in <gasps> yeah the wind okay. would have wouldn't, wouldn't have pushed it because you have to pull the door to actually get right, in the building because it yeah okay yeah so that there's makes... no physical way <laughs> so yeah, I'm like it's... okay um that's it creepy. is the souls of the fat people who had heart attacks in the store <laughs> and if you guys felt they were trying to order the Big Mac <laughs> Any of you guys get any paranormal things? Um, um, actually, recently I had um an incident. It was um in the summer, and me and my cousin are walking around our neighborhood, and did you poop pants? <laughs> no, I didn't, sadly. And we're walking around. Yeah, you know, we we went up to um a, a local um party store that was open at the time, and we go up there. and We're walking back. We have some sodas and stuff like that. You know, it's like pitch black in our neighborhood, and as we're walking back. Oh, oh. There's this little intersection. Like you turn left, you go onto the dirt road where my house is on. You you keep on going. There is um yeah, it, it leads around the neighborhood. 
However, we saw this, it's like 3 in the morning, and there is this old looking lady walking her dog. And as we got close, I'm going like, what the fuck is that? And we, we, we got close, she turns around a corner, and you know, we, we turn around a corner too, and she's just fucking gone. I mean, like, she didn't look like, like, like she, she looked like Muriel's age, you know, she looked like she was at least in her 70s or 80s. What if she had a heart attack and collapsed to the ground and you couldn't see her because she was, like, in pain, dead on the ground? I know, it was just so creepy because, my, my, like, we're walking and all of a sudden, like, we didn't notice it till later and then we see her and she just, like, walks across and she's, like, moving abnormally fast for an 80-year-old, by the way. She just moves across, yeah, walking her dog, her dog looks like this black shadowy thingy, and... This happened this summer. Maybe and Grim Reaper's wife wanted to just smile go dog. Yeah. yeah, smile. It was smile dog, and it was just yeah. creepy. And we couldn't find her. We we looked for her. We couldn't find her. And yeah. Um. Ndl, what do you got? Oh, uh, uh, do you have more tinker? Uh, no, let's go. Uh, Ndl, what do you got? I don't have really any legitimate um experiences. Because I, I kind of have a bit of a skeptical viewpoint on it, but um, I, I th the only thing is back to the whole honey in Connecticut thing. Um, there's a scene in that movie towards the end where the character looks into a mirror and sees like a black ghost thing, whatever it's supposed to be. I didn't pay much attention to the plot line, but. For whatever reason, I go back to the friend's house afterwards, and you know, uh, washing your hands, get ready, getting ready for dinner, mm. stuff like that. You, wait, you Look, wash your hands before dinner? I was a kid, so it was you know just being a. Uh, it's what they did before dinner. I didn't want to. I didn't do it at, at my own house. So yeah, <laughs> I wanted clean hands before dinner. God, I want you <laughs> dirty for me, mongoose. <laughs> and you know just. Look into the mirror. I know it was my mind just playing tricks on me, but you could fuck it. I could fucking swear you see the thing. I saw the ghost thing in the mirror, and it like fucking winked at me, and I'm like, "What the? Fu what is going on?" And I, I sped downstairs, and they were like, "Kevin, did you see the ghost in the mirror?" And that's my name, Kevin, not Mon. Whatever you want to call me, Mongoose Kevin. And I'm gonna call you Keith Urban. Keith Urban, okay. Oh, yeah. You know, when I looked into the mirror again, the ghost wasn't there, so I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I win. Bitch. That's it. <laughs> at my old house, I used to, um, at my first house, I used to feel like whenever I went to try to go to bed, there, there was someone watching me. Um, I, I couldn't sleep. I would stay up all night, and I would just get this constant feeling. And during the time, too, I got constant night terrors and sleepwalking incidents, and yeah, it, just just a whole ton of things like that. And the funny thing is, the second I move out of that house, all of it ends. Like like I don't have night terrors anymore, and um, I, I don't have that weird eerie feeling at my old house. Like in my room, it felt like oppressive. Like like there was like a weight on your chest, and like felt like that there was just someone just standing there, like in the corner or something like that. Where was what? Where was your room located? Well, I was on the top floor in my house, but in my old house, it wasn't. I was like the freaking last house in the neighborhood, and my neighborhood was surrounded by this wooded area. So freaking hell, I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty um, terrifying yeah. itself. Yeah, um, there was. It was surrounded. I'm always surrounded by this woods, and there's only one road that leads in to the neighborhood, and uh, it's a single road until you um go all the way to the end about like 15 minutes up the road until you actually reach another road other than that you're just surrounded by woods <laughs> so Damn. yeah it, it was scary as hell I mean I, I had night terrors like again all of this ends as soon as I move out so I, I don't know how to explain terrors, that night terrors do stop once you reach a certain age it's a psychological thing yeah but it was like an every night thing like every night I would have one and then I move out. The day I move out, it just stops. Hmm. Well, uh, that that is creepy. Um, I have actually a bit of a story to share. Um, take what you will from it. And after this, there's one other topic I want to address uh, in the topic of scary stuff. And then we can uh, end I know this. We're, 
Yeah, we're going a bit long, but I after I tell my story, there's one more topic I want to get into that I think will actually be pretty good. I'll tell. But um, my story, um, it happened when I was, I would probably say I was 11, maybe 12 years old. I'm gonna say 12. Uh, so I was at my friend's house. Let's just call him Kratnoff, even though it's not his real name. No. <laughs> No, no, he's never going to watch this. So his name was Jeremy, all right? I was at his house, and um, we were... Uh, it's fucking weird. We were down in his basement, and, uh, you know, we were listening to some music and stuff, and he was teaching me how to do some wrestling and stuff. And, uh, you know, we, yeah, it was just fine, you know, whatever. And we, uh, we, we turned down the TV, and, you know, we were just... Uh, Whatever, it was fine, and then we uh, went upstairs afterwards to uh, go get some food, and then we came back down and turned the TV back on, and, you know, I mean, it, it wasn't anything like, you could attribute what happened at this point to just being an old TV, but we turn it on, and it's just, like, white noise static, whereas before it was fine, we were watching, like, you know, the news or whatever, and uh, I'm like, yo, Jeremy, go check upstairs, see if, like, there's a problem with the, uh, you know, with the incoming signal or whatever, upstairs, nothing, it was fine, we were like... All right. Well, maybe it's just because it's downstairs and it's old, and so I mean, none of the channels work. Nothing. We actually ended up couldn't. We weren't able to turn the damn thing off. But we're like, okay, whatever. And then uh, he he says, hey, and I'm like, what? And he's like, you know, uh, the, you know, when you're 12 years old, you make cool names for shit. Still, you know, like for me. And he called he called this one place. It was um he had this side room in his basement, and if you went along the wall to it, you would go underneath where the stairs were into another room, which was like the the room like the equipment room, the tool room. And mm -hmm. obviously in the dark you couldn't tell that, but in the dark you know you didn't know where you were. So he always called it he called it the cave or the sewer or something like that. He's like, hey, you you want to go exploring back there? And you know I'm like, yeah, dude, for sure. I mean we didn't, you know, there was he didn't say, oh, there's something back there. He's like, oh, you want to go exploring? I'm like, yeah, sure. Obviously we found out after finding a light source that it was just the other room on the other side of his basement, like a little bunch of silly fucks. But um, we we're back there. And it, it's in his laundry room, and you had to go around a little bit to where you're against the wall, and you had to side strafe along the wall underneath the stairs into the back of the room on the other side. And it's it's pitch black in there. And so, uh, first time we go through, we kind of we kind of uh, get a little freaked out. All right, but we're going. I'm like, hey, Jeremy, uh, can, can, can we uh, bring some light with us or something? He's like, yeah, we we should. And so first thing, sensible, we bring a flashlight. We take it back there. We're going through. I'm holding this. Keep in mind, I insisted to hold every light source we had because I didn't want this kid to like try and play fucking tricks on me. So I'm holding this flashlight. Was working fine. We actually had just well, not not this point. We had we didn't know how old the batteries were. Whatever. So we figured whatever the flashlight works. So we took it back there. We were working our way back through there. And again, keep in mind, it makes it sound like it's some epic. It's just underneath the stairs, the other side of the basement. And so we're going through there, and we get to a certain point. And the fucking flashlight, it goes dead. And we're just like, oh, son. <laughs> and we're like, oh, son of a bitch. I'm like, you know what? It was probably the batteries. Let's just go put new ones in. Because we couldn't get the damn thing to turn back on. And so we go and put new batteries in. Go back there. Same thing happens. We couldn't get it to turn back on at all, no matter how many new batteries we put in there. Um, so I was like, oh, shit. Maybe the flashlight itself was shot. You know, we didn't know. You know, I'm, 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 I obviously understand that could have been an incredible set of coincidences. So then, we uh, we're like, okay, well, still want to explore. Let's get another light source. So we had like a, a toy lightsaber. You know, light up when you press the button, lights up. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like, okay, we'll take that back there. So I go back there. Again, we get to the same spot, and fucking lightsaber goes out. You know, and I didn't press the button, and I had just literally, I turned it on, it was on for maybe five seconds, and it just, it went out, and I couldn't get the damn thing to start again. We replaced the batteries. Same thing happened. And then, I'm like, okay, well, this isn't cool, so let's just, I'm like, Jeremy, you got your iPod, right? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, why don't we just put on some music, whatever you got, and we'll use that for light and something to comfort us. It's like, alright. And so we go back there. Of all things, he puts on Soldier Boy. <laughs> he puts on some Soldier Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was uh, the song Report Card. <laughs> oh, God. And, uh, and so we're going back there. We're using that for light. We get around to that point. And, you know, iPods, obviously, it's all digital, so songs don't fucking skip. The song starts skipping, like repeating. It's like gets caught in a point, repeats two, one second before it gets caught. It, it starts looping, skipping. And I was holding it, and I was watching it. And like it was, it was doing that. It was like getting caught at like, a certain point in, and it wasn't getting past it. It was always looping that one part. 
one second there, and then, you know, iPod died. Oh. And it, 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 well, I mean, it didn't blow up, but it, it fucking yeah. just powered off, and we couldn't get it to turn the fuck back on. And uh, we, it, it was, you know, we just couldn't figure out whatever the hell that was, and it just freaked us out, because every time, like, obviously our younger age heightened the sense of fear, so we could, f we swore that we felt something back there with us, because... It was an artificially created fear, perhaps. You could chalk it up to that. But I tell you, I felt like there was some cold, oppressive presence there. Hmm. You know? That is kind of creepy. And then, you know, it's what was the... Terrifying. Then what the weirdest thing was, again, it could have been someone fucking around with me, but I brought my cap guns over to his place. We were just, you know, fucking around with them, shooting off caps at each other. And uh, it was time for me to go home. And I had one of them. I had mine. And one Jeremy had, he left it on the floor in the basement, on the table, at the coffee table. And he was with me the whole time, so I know he didn't hide it or anything. And I'm looking for it, I can't find this fucking thing. I'm looking around the basement, and I looked upstairs, and I'm like, where is it? And I'm like, oh, what's in here? And Jeremy's like, oh, that's the uh, that's just the workroom, there's nothing in there. But I, I open the door, and I'm like, Jeremy, this, this feels like, I'm thinking, I put it together, I'm like, this is the room that we were going into from behind there. Look, there's the way where we creep behind the stairs. He's like, huh. Oh, okay. He was kind of felt like an idiot, but then there's the gun on the floor. It's a it's a, it's, 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 oh, it's a to, it's a toy cap gun. It doesn't shoot. Ooh, anything. still. It, it doesn't shoot anything. It's just a. It makes the noise. You get a little small little explosion from the two grains of gunpowder you have in there. What a experience. It was creepy. I think he he could have been fucking with me. Who knows? But as it was, it was creepy. All right. So, um, final final thing we can hit for the podcast here, uh, before we wrap it up, and uh, I'll go our respective ways. Uh, Tinker reminded me of it when we started talking about it. Um, some good nightmares you guys have had. Nightmares. Yeah, nightmares, night terrors, whatever. Any scary dream experience that you could care to relate? I'd I love to. Hear I, what I have got. two. Um, remember, um, like that hospital uh, area from uh. Um, time splitters, uh, future perfect. Um, that I, I used to have this dream that we would be like trapped in there and like you know, zombies would get us. But that was like when I was younger. But I had this other dream where I woke up and there was this dude in this purple suit standing over me, and he had an axe in his hand. It was like wearing uh, like white um, gloves, like uh, you'd see a doctor wearing. And he he um. From what I had, he had like some weird, like orange face or something like that. It was unrecognizable. It was like mutilated and shit like that. And then I would like get up out of bed and he'd start chasing me around. Uh, and I would like go try to find my parents. And when I opened my parents' door, they were dead. Like, like fucking cut up, all that shit. You know, just mutilated and dead. I was screaming. I would try to scream. Uh, in my mind, I wanted to scream anyway. I would try to scream, but nothing would come out. Like, I couldn't talk or anything like that. Like, just, like, air. Like, like huffing, wheezing air. And it felt so real to me. Uh, and then I would, like, run downstairs to try to find my brother. But my brother, again... It's called being fat, Tinker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, my brother was dead, and I would, you know, run around. And, I, you know, I, I couldn't find anyone. I was stuck. Uh, this is actually when I was, like, nine. Okay, j just for clarification. Yeah, I, you know, again, all I couldn't... Like, like, every time I try to speak, all, all that would come out was wheezing. That's the characteristic of a lot of nightmares, so, yeah. you know, kind of... So, yeah, I can understand It that. was scary as hell. This dude has this fucking mutilated face, a purple suit that is, like, pristine and clean, and shit. You know, he was chasing... He was, he was like, chasing me, but he was, like, walking. And then the dream wouldn't end until I let him, like, hit me. And there's this one funny experience where um, where th this reoccurring nightmare happened to me, and he hit me, and then all of a sudden, like as if I was looking at a video game or something, it was like game over or like you failed. <laughs> I was like, and then I realized it was a dream at that point, <laughs> but it was kind of, th That's why I don't have that reoccurring nightmare anymore because of that one funny moment. <laughs> oh. Uh. NDL, Tats, what do you got for... Oh, do you have another one for us, Tinker? You said you had two. Oh, yeah, there's this, this stupid one where I, um, I would, you know, be chased by zombies um, in the... You like and... zombies, dude. Yeah, dude, that, that, that game <laughs> scarred me, dude. <laughs> um, Evidently. I think, there, I think I remember this one where me and my cousin went out and there was this um, wooded area 
way back when. Back when you lived in, lived in the middle of Slender. Or or not. <laughs> I, I, I think he got pulled away by his parents. So uh, in the meantime, we can rejoin his when he comes back. Uh, um, okay. Um, uh -oh. got them oh, to shut up. You. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, anyway, yeah. yeah Back when you just, lived in Slender World. Yeah, me and my cousin and my friend Victor walking around, and we were doing Victor our own Crow. thing outside in the woods, right? And there's this wooded at my cousin's house. There's this area, and there's only one entrance into the woods, and this was through this really dark path. We went in there, and I heard some screaming, you know, and I would come out. And they were all gone. I would try to find them, but no. And then eventually, just like led me into like weird areas, like freaking like hospitals and insane asylums and shit. One thing led to another, and I, I realized that they went like mentally insane, and I would wake up, get all sweaty and perspirate and shit. You said hospitals and what else? Yeah, insane asylums. Like there was like I went oh, okay. to this hospital, and then as I was walking through the hospital, like the walls got covered in blood, and there was like some dude sitting there at a corner, rocking back and forth, going like, <laughs> you know, like mumbling something I couldn't tell. Um, but it, the memories of this dream were kind of foggy. I, um, Still, that's, but yeah, that's it was like a man. descent into hell. Yeah, that is. My friends that went really crazy, is. and like the dream ends with me getting like stabbed and shit like that by my cousin. It's like you saw the fucking gateway to hell. <laughs> Drag me to hell. No, oh, that was an awful movie. TM. <laughs> 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 Alright, so, uh, NDL, Tats, what do you guys got for us? Um, I've got one, but if okay. NDL's got one. I don't really. I, and <laughs> once again, I don't have much of a, um,. I don't recall my nightmares that well. The only one I do have is from um, the show A uh, Haunting. Oh, and dude, that show was it fucking was, creepy. And it, yeah, it was. And it was when always I was younger, kind of. That show fucked me up. I would watch it every night. And just because it was in black too. and white, you know, I'm like, I watch Ghost Hunters, not that bad. It, I watched that, shit my pants. Haunting wasn't in black and white. When they were telling the stories. No. What, what, what the haunting was it, it was always a re it was uh basically they turned the story they did a recreation of the story basically yeah i was never yeah it I was, was really, really well done oh uh, yeah i was never afraid of the like effects or like the dramatizations because i knew it was all kind of fake it's just the yeah. way they kind of they did presented such a good job it. yeah then it was probably the narrator that always it just the way he said things, it, he, it I, scared I, me. Yeah, I, kinda, I know what you're saying. In yeah, this, like, there is real evil. Yeah, the, the, in the darkest shadows and in the, in most, the most ordinary or places. Something like that. But yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the darkest, most ordinary places. I forget what he says from there, but yeah. It, but something yeah. about nightmares. Reality. Um, Taps, what do you what do you got? That's good. Um, there was a really creepy nightmare I had um, where um, it was a bit like a bit like zombies, but I don't know if you would count them as zombies. Basically, what it was um, something happened in Britain that made my vast majority of the population. I don't know what it called them though, but um, all I know is that. Arissa was eaten by one. <laughs> that kind of freaked me out. <laughs> um, Arissa, my sister, if anyone wants to know yeah, that that's... is. She has her own channel, yes. But, like I said, it was freaky because um, we actually had to go to this abandoned house. Like, it was just some random house because we had to stay there because we couldn't stay the night. The thing is, you cannot spend the night outside in the open because they get you, apparently. That's it. That's all we were told. Um, so we ventured into this house, but... Um, so we had to spend the night there, but we couldn't go upstairs because... This guy um, said, "This height, guess how you can't go upstairs because they're up there." I'm like, what do you mean they're up there? So you open the door slightly, and there's like about six of them, just human beings, standing there, but they have their mouth open and their eyes are closed, and that means they're dormant. Um, and it's usually this is like when it becomes nighttime, they become active, but they they can't see, so they rely on hearing. That's what this virus does to people. So. We had to spend the night downstairs um, because you know they're upstairs. But that feeling of that they are up there is you know, and they <laughs> they could come down at any moment. Sounds a lot like wreck. <laughs> the shit out of me, 
But yeah, they 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 don't they're not they don't run at you, but they're just dormant. They just they're basically there. They have their mouth yeah. open. They're looking up at the sky, but they just have their mouth open and they're gonna just get you to it. seeing that. Get, yeah. Seeing that, when well, imagine like that, they just have their mouth open, looking up into the sky, and they know you there. You know, it's just God. That just get, and like I said, they ate Arissa, and that's not a very nice thing to see. <laughs> what are you kidding about? That's my fetish. <laughs> Oh, man. oh, knowing yeah, her, it was probably hers too. Probably. Oh. Hey oh. Oh, Tess, how are you gonna take that? With um, that being said, moving <laughs> on. Six, six, six. Yeah. Nine, 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 nine. Yeah. Six, right, six, six. six. The number video. of the beast. All right, so you got any on this video now? Uh, I do. I have um. I, I got several, if you guys don't mind. One of I them don't is mind. funny because of its absurdity, and then there's a couple. That, they're more unorthodox, besides the most recent one, which was just a very recent dream that could class as a nightmare, but didn't scare me, but really shook me up. Um, first one I got for you. I'll, I'll give you two of them that were uh, they, they were funny because of their ridiculousness. Um, let's see. Uh, the uh, let me think for a sec. Yeah, okay. The first one, it was dreams that I had um, frequently when I was in kindergarten and first grade, and before that, they were reoccurring nightmares. That a theme of them did change, but it was a the same overarching concept. And when I tell you guys this, you're gonna laugh your ass off about what it is. You ready for this? Yep. Pretty right, man. A lamp. What sort of lamp? It was a lamp that, um, in my old house, uh, when I lived ten minutes from where I do now, um, we it was a three-story house, and to get up to the third story it was a long staircase, and out of the side of the wall there was just a lamp to you know up the stairwell. But something about the way it looked just it 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 scared me. During the day I wouldn't think too much about it. But I don't know, just something about its aesthetic. Just it bothered me really badly. <laughs> mm. I don't know what it was, and I, I don't know. To me, that's kind of funny. I feel it's because it's so stupid. But in my dreams, I would it always in some way, shape, or form. He, um, Tats, you know this one. You, I've told you about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you can make your joke about it when the time comes. <laughs> Uh, well, no, actually, because I'll segue into this. And he was, um, as, as he, okay, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. He, um, I would always find myself in varying situations in which I would be in some situation in, in the house with this thing around. I might be upstairs and mom might call me down for dinner, or I may be upstairs watching TV or something. But in my dream, always this lamp, this light, would like it wouldn't detach from the wall but it would extend out from the wall and it would fucking somehow telekinetically i don't know it would grab a hold of me and choke me to, to death and typically it would either choke me to death or it would grab me choke me and hurl me down the stairs and this thing it it, it spoke to me a few times and when it did it had literally the voice of a fucking gravel pit it sounded like um like basically you know like the daedra from like oblivion and skyrim that really nasty gravelly liquidy voice yeah that's what he sounded like hmm. there's this lamp that screams at me in that voice at me in my dreams while he's choking me to death and uh the thing is though he he would occasionally have a mustache a gray mustache i don't i don't know why but um and I remember the dream happened so frequently that there were often strange variations of it. A few times, like, I would fall and wake up, you know. But one time I remember I fell and I hit the bottom of the stairs and I, like, my neck broke. And I was looking up at him and he was about to come down for me to finish me off. But on the, kind of like what Tinker said, he reminded me of it when it's like the you have failed. It's um, on the screen. It felt like a video game now in my dream. It said, like, you have died. Uh would you like to reload last save or quit and i chose the quit option and i woke up it was it was kind of funny but that it's didn't trippy. change my, 
it didn't change mm. my fear of him at all and i would see him fucking every day and then um ultimately i it got really weird where finally that happened and i worked up the courage to try and fight back and um it gets weird when um i asked him his name and this isn't the actual joke yet tats about it but i found there were other appliances around my house that were of a similar nature as well but this guy he uh he he grabbed hold of me and stuff and i i'm like what's your name and he with this gravel it, his voice was no longer like gravel pit anymore it, it was, sounded it much like, like the, um ndls uh, yeah, it was actually it, when it wasn't gravel pit it sounded like ndl's voice but in a much creepier way cuz ndl supposed to find out this way i'm sorry <laughs> I, I I says what's your name and he and he says in this NDL he's, he's like I am Seer the spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> I am NDL mongoose. <laughs> and then it gets worse. He fucking takes off and starts like going around a planet like I'm floating in space. He's like, and this fucking lamp is Are you flying. sure you just tripping on acid or something? <laughs> I was six years old! So, um... NDL, Seer, <laughs> had, um... counterparts in the house that would also try and get in my nightmares. Um, namely, the fan in my bedroom. I'm it would try and... Sure. Stop. Stop, <laughs> stop. It, my, the fan in my bedroom would try and kill me. Um... I always had a dream like it, like it, it too had like a, a similar kind of face with like the uh, the the fucking mustache. I don't know what to deal with the fucking mustache. <laughs> All these guys had like the same style mustache. I don't know what the deal was. Mike Dawson. That was mustache. before NDL had his beard. <laughs> yeah. It's when he, it's when he just yeah. had the mustache. And the uh, and so that my fan tried to kill me. I always had a dream it was just a ceiling the fan. Blender. <laughs> no, actually, you know what the weirdest one though was. An air vent in the basement. That one is that one I could relate to because it, yeah. you know, it's in the basement, and you know. Yeah, I'll send you. Uh, I'll send Tats a picture of it. Maybe you could like show what I'm trying to describe, um, because it's it's hard to understand unless I actually like specify what it looks like. Um, okay, it's an air vent. I believe it's where you know it's the air flows out of. It could be used for heating. It's typically used for heating. I think it could be used for AC as well. Typically, um. You'll see it like if you look on the ceiling in like you know uh, a department store, you know like Target, Walmart, something like that. But typically those are rectangular. It's uh, it's typically made of plastic. This one was actually circular, but you know you have one part of it, it's like a, a square, and then you know you have a venting part to it, and then you have another square part in the center. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're like typically a white grayish plastic. You guys know what I'm talking? Oh, I will, man. All right. Um... <laughs> It was so great podcasting plan. with you guys. I'll, uh, I'll see you later, all right? That's NDL. NDL. That's NDL, yeah. Uh, that was uh, NDL. <laughs> all right. I've actually... Um, I, I put a picture into the uh, the Skype chat there for you. Uh, picture basically what that is that I've sent you. Um, in a smaller scale and circular. You guys see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There was that, but in... It had that for a head, but it was also like that's what the body was made of. Think of like if you make a 3D model in your video game modeling program and you apply that as the texture, that's what it was made I of. I keep on thinking Optimus Prime. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like made but out of like creepy. air vents. Oh no, he was textured of air vents like that. But he looked like a normal human being, and um, he 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 would and he had those on his hands like spinning things like chainsaws like. <laughs> And uh, somehow I inherently knew his name, and um, his name was Calisty. Oh, I should have called <laughs> Starship. Why. He was like, because that's the sunny name. He was like Calisty. And I, I told Tats this one time uh, a couple years ago, <laughs> and, and, and Tats, uh, <laughs> well, how, how did you go with that one? My name is Calisty. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, yeah, it's just, it. and that's always made Kenshin laugh every time I've done that. Yeah, I don't know what it was, and so um. Then, why you, you made know, that growling noises? I can't remember why. I don't know. I think I was trying to do the sound that I did just now, but I failed. 
Um, and so I would have frequent dreams with these uh, with these fuckers in them, and they would always try and kill me. And uh, like one I had, I woke up and like my room was completely in zero G, and like all my stuffed animals were floating around and stuff, and like it looked like there was sunlight beyond my shades. And the owl was like there. <laughs> Well, no. Actually, <laughs> taking you through space. <laughs> what was? All my animals, all my stuffed animals and my plushies were all looking at me with these angry looks on their faces, and they were yelling at me. I don't remember what, but they were yelling at me, and my clock was floating. It was weird. And then I got up, and I was walking through the hallway, and then NDL, Seer, was just, he was floating around in the stairwell ready to strike. And it, was, it was very strange. And then, um, this other dream that I had one time, I used to be obsessed with um, Egypt and ancient Egypt, stuff like that. And um, I just had this weird combination of dreams. It, it, it bothered me so bad. And then I'll actually get into a recent dream I had that tip it's not very unique, but it was intense. Um, I had this dream when I must have been like around the same age, six. I had like all these fucked up dreams on. Um, it was a combination of weird things. It started off like, you know, you're watching Home and Garden, you see like the home show, stuff like that. Well, I had a dream it was like a home show, really, and they're like selling a home. And it's like in this really fancy neighborhood, and they're like, this female narrator is like listing off all the stuff that this house has. It's like it has all blah, 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 interior, blah, 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 fully updated kitchen. And it's just like, oh, this is pleasant, you know, green, grassy stuff. The house has pillars. Then she's like, and flutes. 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 She keeps on saying flutes over and over and over. I don't know why. I don't have a phobia of flutes. <laughs> you have a phobia of NDL taking you to space. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, this involves space too, believe it or not. And she's going on and she's like, flutes. 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 I think like, a tape recorder break or something. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. And then, and then it cuts to, um... Like the dream hard cuts, and I was well, I I did, wasn't necessarily me in the dream, but my view was I was in Egypt, in front of the temple of Abu Simbel, and it was nighttime, and guess who was there? None other, but Elmo. <laughs> From fucking Sesame Street, <laughs> and he standing there in you like. You think and yell taking you to space was scary? <laughs> Wait till I take you. I'll make you count the colors. I hate you. <laughs> He's standing there in like a medieval knight castle. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> He's got a shield and everything. He's got a sword. I'm going to like count pretty... you up. Yeah, that'd be kind of freaky. <laughs> but no, he's just. Well, someone stand... actually do like a fan art of Elmo in a medieval knight. I bet there is, but probably loads of them. On someone the needs to do that, like with Kenshin, and then like yeah. NDL and I, or like NDL like standing over it with like a freaking <laughs> like controlling it like a puppet. <laughs> And then it gets worse because, like, Elmo stand there, and then out of the ground comes a giant clock. <laughs> and Elmo stand on top of this cuckoo clock, and it's going up into space. And Elmo is just standing on it as it's going up and up and up. And on the bottom of it, supporting it all, is a st is like that typical statue mask of Tutankhamun from Egypt. And it's just going up, and then it's in space, and then, uh, fucking, the, it, like, strikes 12, and, and then two and comments, like, woo, And that scared me so bad! He was, like, picking the side of an owl! Um, <laughs> okay, you that, know what? When did this scary stuff turn into comedy stuff? <laughs> but I'm serious! This stuff scared the I, shit I, out I, of I me! I know, but I know when you think about it. I know. Oh I'm my back. god. You you guys just reminded me of just one story. This is going to be my last story for tonight. But um, when I was... I, I, I have a share, uh, so you go. Anyway, when I'm... Wait, what? I have a few more to share, so please, you go on. I'll yeah, alright. Um, well, anyway, I'm when I was younger, um, again, I had this nightmare where I was wandering around the house and I was playing with my toys. And then I realized, again, same thing, I couldn't talk. And again, the only thing that came out was this yeah, like wheezing better. breath thing. And... As I'm like standing there playing with my toys in the basement, like a fake, really stupid looking um, Yeti thing, like like a stereotypical Yeti thing came down there, and it was like, you know, s roaring at me. And I went upstairs. And I tried to tell my mom, and mom's go like, no, you know, you can go play in the basement. I'm pointing at the freaking Yeti thing that's like right there. Mom doesn't notice it or care about it, so she forced me back in the basement. I'm back in the basement, and this thing tears my arm off, but my arm turns into this like pla like one of those plastic fake looking arms, like that you would get at the dollar store for a Halloween decoration. 
<laughs> he started like beating me with this plastic fake arm. Was it fucking Chewbacca what? down there? <laughs> <laughs> it scared the hell out of me because it's like we're yelling. It didn't look scary. It looked like a dude in like a suit. <laughs> it looked like a Mike, suit. And, I, and why I, can't my dreams have better production values? My anthropology teacher came into school dressed like a gorilla today in a gorilla suit. Yeah. Anyway, it tore my arm off, and there was like duct tape at the end of it that was like connecting it to my body. <laughs> Do you have, like, some self-loathing issues, Tinker? I don't want my right arm anymore. <laughs> I don't want my right arm! I cut it off, and then I duct-taped it back, and then the Yeti's like, no, it's mine I now. I regret everything. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you, uh, you have another story to tell, so I'll let you get that. God. Okay. Um, <laughs> my dreams sometimes, they're just, they're, they're weird, as you can tell. And, um... On a couple occasions, like, I would have more sensible dreams, like, one time, like, the way we were going home, we were going home from my grandparents' house one time in a dream, across the Skyway, which goes, uh, leads from Lackawanna into downtown Buffalo, and I had a dream that we were on there, the whole thing, like, blew up, and my car drowned into the water, whatever, but then there was this one that I, I could never properly recall it, so I never talked about it, but I figured, what the hell, we are talking about NDL in space, I mean, why the fuck not? Um, I remember it was a single event from it was that um, I w was it, it was <laughs> this will really fucking make you laugh it was uh, it started off with Winnie the Pooh <laughs> and uh, in context uh, like the it was the movie where they go off looking it was Winnie the Pooh and like the great search for Christopher Robin or something when he was going to school but they all thought he says he was going to skull because fucking I was an idiot and translated it wrong and uh and it was like my dream was taking place within that movie of sorts almost and I was at the point where they, they're in the caves and poo and everyone gets lost and I was lost in these caves in my dream and I remember um I, I, I couldn't find my way out and uh it came to the point where I, I thought I saw my way out there was like a door but I'm running through it's like a big blaster I'm running through it and there's like a camera in front of it and I get there and it sees me and fucking just closes the door and I'm left in utter death and darkness in these caves and I knew I was gonna die and I just started screaming and crying and I was trapped in there and I woke up but it scared the shit out of me and again I was like five six years old damn yeah and then um recent dream that I had you know not remarkable as far as dreams go but it was um it, it was interesting you know I while I do have dreams I die and stuff, I never, you know, some dreams I have, like, where I know I, like, jump off of a ledge and I fucking kill myself, I don't know, but, um, th that was, like, accidental, like, when I was younger and stuff, but this one, it was strange, because I've never gotten shot in a dream before until this uh, one I had the other day. A lot of people say, it's a common thing. Yeah. Um. To me, it, what? Usually dreams end when you get hurt, right? Usually, but that's why this dream was an oddity, because I this was a dream where I got shot, and it continues on. Um, I was back in my old neighborhood. Uh, again, I used to live ten minutes away. It's not the best of neighborhoods anymore, but I mean, it's not awful, but it's not the best place to live. But I mean, it certainly isn't that bad compared to what it could be. And I. I actually was back there the other day, like yesterday, because I was going to a wake out that way. But around when I had this dream, maybe about a month ago, I was doing some practicing driving with my grandfather, and we drove up by there, drove by my old house, drove through the neighborhood, you know, a little bit of a uh, uh, fucking reminiscing, whatever, nostalgia. And uh, I was surprised I didn't let you change there. And maybe a week or two after that, I had a dream I was back there in this dream. And that I was back in my house there, and I was in my living room there, and that there was a, a, a storm coming, Mr. Wayne. There was a storm coming, and um, for some reason, we had to get in the car and get going somewhere. I don't know why, but we did. And I remember, like, I remember looking out the window, and there was a street that ran right into my house. You know, like, if you were to keep going down that street, you'd pull into my driveway. That wasn't like that in all reality, but I didn't think about it. Um, so we got in the car, and we're driving. I remember mom had to go stop at work for something really quickly to pick something really important up. So she does. 
she goes in, runs out, and she's back in the car, she's got what she needs, and we're leaving, and there's these fucking, like, white hoodlum fucking gangster fuck asses out in front of the school, because my mom, yeah, she used to teach at school. She, wow, she, of course she taught at a fucking school. <laughs> um, and it was a bad school, it was called Falk School, and it's where they send the worst of the worst kids, you know, like, behavioral problems and stuff. And, uh, so there's plenty of gang stuff there and so we're like we're pulling away and these fucking gang kids start causing trouble with us and talking shit and of course I'm talking shit back and we're just trying to fucking get the fuck out and so um they start chasing after the car and we're getting out of there I'm like okay good we're safe but then we turn down a few streets that I do know in reality and they get all their fucking gangster buddies found out about this and apparently in my, this neighborhood in my dream everybody in this neighborhood's a fucking gangster because everyone's getting out on like their porches and stuff and they got uzis and stuff and on their roofs and they're just opening fire on my car with i'm with my mom and dad and now yeah. you know why tats was scared of gta you know, I'm, with, I'm with my mom and dad these gangsters are opening fire on us and of course you know i don't i, I see my dad in dreams from time to time you know and it's nice when i do but he was driving stuff as usual, and so we're being fired at by these fucking gangsters and stuff. He's just trying to get us out here, and the storm already hit, and it's blowing, storming. It's it's awful. It's the worst thing I've ever seen. They're still chasing after us, not giving up the hunt. My dad's trying to get out of the neighborhood as quick as possible, just flooring it. And we're just about out. And my mom, who's in the back seat with me, is shoving me down beneath the seats so that I don't get hit. You know, she she was willing to take a shot for me. But somehow, uh, one of the gangsters got like a good vantage point and just unloaded right into me. I just started bleeding out everywhere. I felt all the bullets go in and it hurt so bad. It just incredibly much. I just, you wouldn't even know it was incredibly painful. And I just remember thinking, then one of those dying thoughts in my dream, you know, one of those silly dying thoughts, I thought, if I die, can I reload from my last save? And now, you know, if you tell someone like that, they're like, oh, ha, laugh, you know, it was a funny dream. I'm like, no, I was thinking that because it was my last delirious thought before death in my dream. And I thought that, and I felt myself dying in the dream. And I felt everything fade out and turn to red and the pain. I, I was ripping bullets out of my chest. And my mom is over me and she's crying and screaming for me. And she doesn't want me to die. And I don't want to die. I'm I'm taking the bullets out but I'm just bleeding out all over the back of the car and then it all faded to black and then it didn't end I woke up within the dream like I came to within the dream and it's hard to it looked like there without you know saying generic so I'll just say and literally what it sounded like I woke up in limbo like an in inception you guys see inception mm -hmm. I woke up in limbo and I haven't seen Inception, like we're watching it right now in my psych class, but at the time when I had the dream, I hadn't seen Inception, and I hadn't thought about Inception in, it, in maybe two years. So it wasn't like it was actively on my mind, but it was the same, it, it wasn't like the city that Cobb and Maul had built, but it was, it was the beach. And I didn't even think, oh, I'm in limbo. I thought I'm in the afterlife now, because I died. But now looking back, I was in I, I, effectively in my dream. I was in limbo, and you know here I was, and it wasn't like oh you know okay I just went into this dream now this happened I'm in a new dream. No, I remember having just died, and I realized okay here I am now, and I remember I just I screamed because I realized I died and I left my parents all alone, and I was dead now and I had no way of getting back to them, and I realized I was dead. I was in this afterlife, heaven, whatever you want to call it. And I was, it was the most painful, you know, emotion ever, knowing that I was now dead and left the people I loved behind. And I was in limbo here, just unable to ever escape. But then I saw someone that I know quite well from a, I, my, a good friend of mine, Ed, from my Taekwondo class. He was there too. Of course, I didn't give much thought to the fact that, you know, is he dead too? In all reality, maybe it was like he was in limbo in his dreams as well. Who knows? but that, that leaves much to be figured. But he was in my dream, and he he almost inherently knew what was going on, what was wrong. And I was telling him about what had happened, how I got shot, and how I didn't want to leave my parents, blah, 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 blah. And he 
through somehow. He said, "He says, you know, I, I was saving this for myself, but I, I think you deserve it better. You need it." And he, uh, there's these light that emanates from his hands, and he puts his hands on to me, and I feel this incredible energy course through my body, and I, you know, I, I start floating up into the air and I remember just being surrounded by all this light and stuff and then I remember coming back to in the other level of the dream with my parents I came back and I remember I was in the hospital and stuff and I remember I, I came back fully alive and well and they were so thrilled to see me I was back and it was amazing I, I went from one level of dream to another and then back again all conscious of all the other dreams all conscious of trying to get back to this point and then I remember just being glad to be back and realizing that I had died and come back and then I I I woke up in real life. And this is, wasn't from a full night's sleep. This was maybe a two-hour nap that I had that I had this dream. Yeah, it's a pretty cool dream. I've had dreams similar to that too, but I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> yeah. Um, c c could I maybe share one more? Um, yeah, no problem. Yeah, this one wasn't a dream. Uh, this one it was it was just strange. This one was actually scary. Um, it's a briefer story. Have you guys ever heard of something called binaural beats? Yep, the one we used in the lavender town syndrome. That's stuff. right. Yes, that's right. Like when you, ha I never heard lavender town until Tat sent it to me because I never had any system to play Pokemon on. Uh, so when I got it, I'm like, oh, those are binaural beats. Well, um, there's a company called iDoser that basically makes the binaural beats as digital drugs, like these. I think beats. I know where you're going with this because you sent me a copy. Of yeah, the thing, yeah. Yeah, and I told you about my experience. Yeah. And obviously they have ones to try and attempt to simulate effects of acid, of weed, you know, of all these different drugs, but of caffeine, there's ones that try and, like, you know, listen to this and you'd feel happy. It's all different, you know, for those of you who don't know what binaural beats are, there's, it's a, basically a tone that's created that, um, one frequency in one ear is, like, a little bit lower or higher than one in the other ear, and they're at this frequency that is designed to trigger certain parts of the brain. And that gap that's made in pitch is so minuscule to the point where you won't notice it, but your brain will. And so your brain will serve as the mediator and attempt to create something in between to make it feel like those two are at the exact same pitch. And that frequency that your brain adjusts itself to audially is meant to trigger a certain part of the nerve of the brain to create a certain experience. For the most part, for me, it's never, ever worked. I tried the Lucid Dream one one time. It sort of worked. You'd got to listen before you go to bed. I tried the Acid one. I felt like I was made of water, but that was a it was strange. But there's one that um it's 30 minutes long. It's it's of their most extreme that they have. It's only for someone who wants the scariest experience possible. You know, again, believe what you will about these binaural beats and stuff like that. To me, I never found they worked, but this one did. It was a 30 minute track. Uh, it was, yes, I pirated it. They want like a hundred bucks for the real thing. I pirated it and every other dose that they have. Sue me. Um, it was called Gates of Hate. It can be done. I know. The reason it was so expensive was because they made it, but they felt that anyone who should listen to it, it was just unfit to be listened to. You know, they released it for the person who really wanted to, but they felt it was such a, an experience that it shouldn't be consumed by the general public. But I did, because me being the horror junkie I am, I wanted to undertake it. And I'm thinking, okay, yeah, right. And there's a lot of reaction videos on YouTube and people saying, oh, this happens, this happens. And so when I'm listening to it, and I encourage you guys to seek it out for yourself, you could probably find an MP3 of it out there or find it on YouTube. So I won't ruin the experience for you uh, of what it sounds like in the events that, like... Because it's not just, like, the... Uh, it makes a good use of tonal shifts. There's no, like, screaming. It's just literally just those tones, those beats. It says it's beats, but it's tones. And it makes excellent use of shifts in pitch of the tone that set the mood to it. I'm not going to explain how it does it. I encourage you guys to check it out for yourselves. But um, it, there's a point where it's it's sort of like the trigger point. It's, it's um, fairly far into the half-hour track, and it's where basically it changes what you're hearing from this, you know, slow kind of creepy build up. Well, not creepy, but when you're hearing it, you know, it's it's supposedly playing on the fear part of your brain, stimulating that. And it totally it goes from that to totally just being an onslaught to it basically in the tonal shift it is. And um 
that's what people report will get them because that's when it triggers its most intense effects. And so I tried this out. I'm laying in bed. You know, I, I go for the full experience. I, I lay in bed. It's, you know, it's at 12 at night. I turn everything off. You know, no, I don't even bother with the light on my alarm clock. Fuck all that. I'm sitting there. I'm listening and making sure I'm staying awake. I prop up a few pillows. So I know I didn't fall asleep because I had made sure I was awake. And so people said to get the best experience out of these binaural beats, you have to focus on the sound itself, not block out any other thoughts. Sort of like a meditation kind of deal. Focus on that sound so your brain can create its own intermediary. So I do that, and for a while I'm just like, okay, it's just the sound. And then I start slipping into this sort of almost meditative state. I start getting lost in the sound. And inside my mind, what I'm seeing in this sort of almost like meditative vision, I see myself, you know, you know, uh, you guys have played Oblivion, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see myself yeah. in a similar world to uh, Oblivion from the Elder Scrolls games. And obviously I could contribute that to the fact that my mind is experiencing, supposedly experiencing a fearful thing, and it attributes that to a scary place when it attempts to create a, a vision for it, so I put it to oblivion. And so I'm walking there, and, you know, it's it's your typical, for those of you who haven't played oblivion, it's, uh, or any Elder Scrolls game, it's uh, basically, in the Elder Scrolls series, it's the equivalent of hell. Um, and so I'm walking in it, and uh, again, just I'm hearing this audio with it. I'm walking, you know, I see the lava, I see the red sky and everything, and you know the the burning sand underneath me, and I uh, I see like the spires off in the distance. And I'm walking towards them. I see like the turrets and stuff of like that. And I'm just walking and walking and walking, you know, just through the song. Nothing special happens. Um, and then it gets to the the, the trigger point, as I call it where you know it pinpoints and just assaults that part of the brain apparently from what i've figured it does and um one of the the turrets in oblivion that shoots fireballs at you shoots one at me and it comes at me right when i'm about to cross the bridge and it hits me and i like there's this burst of flame and then this this the the onslaught the pitchel onslaught comes at me in the audio and my, i literally um I feel my body, um, like literally paralyze. Like I can't move. Like and I felt my eyes start going into like this really intense, like rapid eye movement beyond behind my closed eyes. I was fully conscious, and so I feel like this was meant to induce a lucid dream where you, where you like you know your body falls asleep and everything, but your brain doesn't. Because I got locked into this thing. Because, you know, when you dream, your eyes are in the REM state. My eyes are freaking out behind my eyelids. But, yeah, I was aware of what I was doing. I wasn't totally, like, 100% lost in it. I was aware, okay, this is induced by this 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 Gates of Hades thing. I'm not sure if I called, said what it was called. I did, probably. So I was aware of that. I was aware that I was laying in bed, but I was also aware I was in the experience. But at this point, I'm experiencing this. I couldn't get out. I was locked into this, couldn't move. I started sweating real bad, and in the vision itself, it changed from me exploring oblivion. It when it first started happening, I saw myself. I was lying on the ground, facing upwards in a cemetery, and I just saw this black, misty, black, black-clad, misty, hooded figure standing over me. And then more did, and then more and more and more, like all these like occult members, like the Grim Reaper almost. And I start sinking down in the ground, and they're just looking down on me until I eventually break through the bottom of the ground. And I start falling. There's fire all around me, and I'm seeing all these scary things. It's like freaking hell in there, all these satanic, creepy things, burning stuff, crosses melting, and people being tortured and stuff like that it's, it's just really creepy and uh and you know think of all the most hellish ghastly things you could imagine you know what could be happening in this like black void i'm falling through now and it was there the worst things you could think of and the most just blasphemous torturous things was, was all there it was it was it, it was insane and all i wanted to do was just snap out of it just wake up but this 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 thing I was listening to just it wouldn't let me, 
And so I'm just freaking out, and it's and that gets even worse, and all of it starts spinning around, getting distorted, and filling up my brain, and it's just so weird, and I couldn't get out of it, and I was I started praying because I thought literally because now I had fully given into the the lucid dream, and I forgot that I was just laying in bed, and I literally felt like. I was fighting for my soul, so I started praying. I felt like I was about to go into hell, and I, I had to pray for my soul. And so I'm doing this. I'm like, God, please forgive me. Blah, 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 blah. And then the pirate you know, it. Make Andy and leave me alone. <laughs> I don't want to go into space. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm praying for my fucking soul. And then uh, eventually it stops, relents, and fades out. And I. Hey. Oh, I could not fall asleep for another two hours because I was just so scared. I couldn't believe what had happened, what this kind of experience it was. And uh, it, it was amazingly freaky. And another side effect of listening to it from there is supposed to be nightmares following that. But I never had any nightmares following that. Thank God I just had that singular experience. But my God, I could feel like the fire and everything in the, the torture. It was just so real. Yeah, was, those eye and stuff so when done scary. right can actually pretty fuck you up, man. I did it I, once before. Um, all I know is I heard some weird girl whispering in my ear and it scared the shit out of me. Yeah, like, that's the only time I ever had an eye doser thing work right for me. And I consider trying it again from time to time just for shits and giggles. I, but that thing, it, it worked right. I did it twice, actually. Both times it worked well. First time was amazing. Second time was not as, like, intense. But it's still, oh, God, it's freaky. Yeah, um, I think we're we're on um, hitting the two hour mark. So I'm gonna <laughs> say, with that being said, we are ending the podcast. Hope you had fun Can with I the Top Screw podcast. And Kenshin apologizes for rambling. So with Not that really. being said, <laughs> fuck you all. Kenshin says sorry, and he's sorry for pirating. But no, I don't go say hell. sorry. I say lick my ass. But I did go to hell. Okay, and have I fun. Like you all to go to hell as well. Have a ghoulish Halloween.